everybody. Uh, how you doing? Podcast time. I'm good. How are you? Fuck. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. Hope, you, hope you got your screenshot tools that's, out because that's the show. Those are the notes. That's it. That's, that's what everything. we're talking about. Uh, how you doing? Good to see you. Uh, we're doing podcasts. It's yeah, it's podcast, podcast time. time. Thanks for being here. Uh, uh, wonderful time. Yes. Some would say the best time. It is an adequate time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, oh, just so much to talk about. Yes. Uh, there is actually a lot here to talk about. Yes. Uh, I was panicking because I filled up the, our show notes mostly last night and when I started, I'm like, I don't think there's going to be a lot to talk about. And then as I'm going, I'm like, oh, there's a lot there's to a talk lot. about. We got a big show for you. I don't know if we're going to be able to get through all Probably this. Probably not. I mean, there's still like maybe like one or two we can skip. But. What I thought was big news was this MU deck situation. I mean, that is big news. And it fits yes. right into your core demographic. Yes, right, um, in the, right in the gut of the core demographic. Right. Um, that said, big news dropped today regarding... Uh, a Sony first party IP that uh, nobody played that nobody played, <laughs> but like, I think it's pretty indicative of the current state of the AAA game space. Oh so. yeah. Uh, and then there's a PS5 pro league apparently. Yes. Uh, also I played a little star Wars out. Uh, you did. Uh, do we, you want to we'll, wait till we talk about? Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I okay. do. I also played deadlock, but that yeah. has nothing to do with anything. I started a little bit of horizon zero dawn on the steam deck recently. That's wild. I know that's weird. A friend of mine who's not like, you know, a hardcore gamer but does play games says it's one of the best games he's ever played. I'm not that far into it, but let me tell you, that game does not get moving for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> I So much story. I can't imagine liking that game. Uh, I don't hate it so far. It's just it's a lot of like slow going you know it's a lot of like backstory and context that you have to get filled oh in that's my first. favorite type of game yeah like there's something also my eyebrow. a lot of like moments that i feel like could have been used for like tutorial purposes like mm -hmm. teaching you how to like you know do the platforming stuff or like the combat stuff is done in a cutscene montage Ooh, like telling you how to do it or no like it's like showing your no spoiler alert for Horizon for the but, beginning of Horizon. Yeah, but like you know, it shows Aloy, the main character, go go from like a child to like you know, young adult. Yeah, and that's a montage of her like doing training for a trial she's supposed to do when she's older. Oh, when you could literally be you. You training. could have been doing yeah, that. Yeah, that's very dumb. yeah. I will say that the VR game, yeah, the VR Horizon, whatever yes. it's called, uh, I played that yes. and hated it. Right, it was very bad. <laughs> So I'm gonna stick with it and see where it goes, but that's a that's a note. <laughs> Before we get into any news, we have to talk about it's a new month. Yeah, and since we're all talking about PlayStation, why don't we talk about the PlayStation Plus games you will get for free with your subscription to any tier of PlayStation Plus? Let's see if PlayStation did anything good this month. Quidditch. Yep, that's right. I think this is the new Quidditch game that's supposed to be coming out. It says out. PS5, PS4. Yeah. So if you PS5, PS4, all you Harry Potter heads were still hanging on to the franchise, even though the, the author is infested with black mold, uh, here is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so is this an exclusive game? I No, this isn't an exclusive game. I think this was the Quidditch game that WB Discovery um, said that they were going to make. But, like, didn't give a release date? I think this is it. Well, it's supposed to be out today. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is it. Yeah. So this is a brand new game. And if you have a PlayStation Plus subscription, you can play it. It is not an exclusive. No. It, it is coming out on Xbox Series S and X. And it is uh, going to come out on Nintendo Switch at some point. Right. Uh, but it could get canceled. So that's cool. I that's don't know if the cool. game's good, but Quidditch, even for like a Harry Potter novice like myself, I always thought that looked kind of fun. And maybe the game provides a good old Quidditch experience. It's pretty cool that uh, if you have PlayStation Plus, uh, you can just get this game. Yeah. Uh, and you don't even need premium, right? Yeah, it's all of them. Yeah, premium, all extra, years, yeah. essentials. That's cool. Uh, sticking with sports, this time a real sport, <laughs> depending on you know who you are boomers out there uh baseball mlb the show 24 for ps4 I mean, and ps5 objectively a real sport <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> quidditch is objectively a, not a real sport no you know what is funny though? i just want to put that out there and i don't i hate to nerd shame but have you ever seen people try to play quidditch 
for real. Yes. It's hysterical. Yes. I love it's, it. It's it's very interesting. <laughs> uh, and then a little lot Nightmares 2. Yes. Uh, also for PS4 and PS5. Uh, I'm not sure about that game. Uh, have you played Little Nightmares 1? I feel like you have. No, I okay. have not. Then I stand corrected. Am I going to get confused? I think the guy who made the first Little Nightmares uh, left the studio. Or the Little Nightmares got bought out by somebody else. So, like, the people making this didn't make the original Little Nightmares okay. or something uh, like that. Little Nightmares is a puzzle platformer developed by uh, Trazier Studios and published by Bandai Namco. Uh, Little Nightmares 2... Also, Tracer Studios and Bandai Namco. Oh, Zombie Bait in the chat says uh, they sold the IP after two. Okay. So this is still. Yeah, one Little of the good Nightmares ones, I guess. 3 was developed by Supermassive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is cool. Okay. Yeah. This is a very good month. This is a decent month for, for uh, if you have PlayStation, uh, get PlayStation Plus. Yeah. If you don't have it already, you got some good games. You, got, you got a brand new game uh, from a popular IP, uh, you got a game for your dad. <laughs> and you got the little nightmares too. When did MLB the show 24 come out? Because it's, uh that's a big deal. It's 24. I assume it came out last year. No. Uh no, March of this year. Yeah. Oh, I guess that makes sense. Well, I mean the baseball season's wrapping up. You know, I never a, hear anything about like the World Series or anything. It's usually it in October. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it, it like sneaks up on you. Yeah. Yeah, all I know is Mets probably are not going to make it. So. I see a lot of uh, baseball clips on TikTok. Yeah. A lot of wacky plays. A lot of... Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Baseball is rife with guy, wacky plays. Is that guy on TikTok who uh, does the lip reading of yeah. them oh, all cursing yeah. at each other? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, so that's your free stuff. Uh, there's nothing else, right? No, 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 no that's it. Is, Xbox is... doesn't do that anymore. Nintendo likes to like surprise you with free games. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like there was some good stuff on. I think it was Amazon had good stuff recently. Yeah. Uh, well, let's get right in. Well, before we get into anything, I gotta thank some people. Uh, we got who do we got? DJ Kento, thanks for the four months. What's up, fellow humans? Uh, also Seth Films with thirty four months. I think that was yesterday. Joss uh, Ross Jeff Bach with 15 months. Oh my god, I'm actually able to be too alive. Oh my god, thanks for being here. Oh my god, wow. Uh, Ill Master, thanks for the seven months. Happy Tuesday, Wolf Bros. Uh, thank you, Rainy Ray Danny. Thanks for the 16 months. Another podcast. Uh, and there can only be one Andrew. Thanks for the 13 months. Hey fellas, haven't been able to catch a live video in ages since moving. Just wanted to say congrats on your engagement. Oh my god, thank you so much. We're engaged. <laughs> um. <laughs> Also, I'd like to uh, uh, say uh, rest in peace, George McFarlane. He is uh, not dead. Okay. Got banned from the chat okay. twice. Yikes. And it's a two-week ban <laughs> for, I think, making fun of British people. <laughs> <laughs> and he got banned for two weeks, came back, did it again, and now he's banned for another two weeks. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Wolf Den Dad in the chat. Wow, I'm impressed. Sun One and Sun Two actually talked about baseball for two seconds. <laughs> Sports. Yeah. Yahoo. Uh okay, let's talk about real, real news. games. <laughs> real games. <laughs> Amu Deck. Now, if you don't know Amu Deck, they make a one click solution for getting all your emulators on your Steam Deck. Yes. They've since moved that over to Windows. They've since moved that over to Android. Uh, now they're making their own console. Yes, and it's for realsies, and it's weird. And there's a lot of things around this that's <laughs> yeah. weird. It, it, it's an Indiegogo. I mean, get into it if you. All right, yeah, I, I got it. Up. Into uh, it. it looks like a Dreamcast. It first looks of all, like it a looks Dreamcast. very much like a Dreamcast. If you are familiar with the name Emu Deck, uh, you're likely a Steam Deck owner uh, looking for an easy and user friendly way to run emulators on your Steam Deck handheld. Now, one of the coders behind the software suite is dipping their toes into a branded gaming hardware with the Emudeck Machines project now seeking funding on Indiegogo. The Emudeck Machines obviously come, to, uh, come with Emudeck software pre-installed to let users easily play your retro games uh, from your couch, but they also prom uh, promise to let you run games from Steam and other popular PC launchers through the Linux-based gaming-focused uh, Bayside OS. 
Bazite. The Bazite. Which I have on my Asus ROG Ally X, and I have mm-hmm. a video about it, and it fucking rules. Nice. Uh, the vibe is definitely similar to that of Valve's own aborted Steam Machines effort from years back, albeit uh, in a less official capacity. I used to be a PC guy, but in the last 20 years, I switched to the Mac, and in the Apple ecosystem, choosing a computer is easy. Project lead uh, Dragoon uh, Durise told Ars Technica in an email, but then I found myself wanting a gaming rig so I can start my search, and boy, oh boy, I was lost. The PC industry seems to be trying to trick you every step of the way, gazillions of options, hard to understand what's good and what's not. If you are a tech set. It, uh, if you are tech savvy, it's not hard. Uh, you know what to get and what to avoid. Then it hit me. I made emulation easy with Emudeck. Why not make hardware easy too? I, I just want to pause and say that thank you. Finally, somebody is agreeing that like, yes, they do try to trick you along the way to like confuse you and make you buy the most expensive things that you don't need. I, so thank you. I think that's an interesting reason for them to want to make this. Yes. Uh, for reasons we'll get into, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, uh, yes. I mean, cons- consumerism is always trying to trick you no matter what. Anyway. Yeah. And unfortunately, PCs are really expensive and there's a lot of things that you can buy. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of there's a lot of different steps where you can get tricked into spending a lot more money than you need. Yeah. I think a lot of it is the PC uh, building and, 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 and PC like culture yeah. where uh, PC culture is very... Dad, I don't mean it like that. <laughs> Not that one, Not Dad. Not that one. Dad, you can keep watching. <laughs> no, like, uh, when people are building computers, they they feel like they're obligated to get really powerful hardware. Yeah. And people uh, really glorify a lot of the really powerful hardware. Yeah. When there's absolutely no reason for 99% of people to get the most expensive and best stuff. Mm-hmm. But they do anyway. Yeah. I know people who get fucking 4090s and their computers play goddamn minecraft yeah and play uh super smash bros melee and stream you know you don't need all that yeah. stuff to, to to do that um so i can see people pushing you to get uh expensive hardware in that way uh i get i i, ha- I did get somebody asking me in my chat the other day uh w- i want to buy a pc what do you recommend i only want to emulate games and it's like anything you can literally get anything <laughs> yeah. yeah if if, if you only want to emulate up to like you can GameCube. buy a computer from best buy that'll do that yeah. for you so that it's i understand uh the need for something like this um wh- I, I'm, I'm sure we'll keep talking about it but um one of the things at first glance is like why would i want to buy a console when i can just get a steam deck that does the same thing and right. i can dock it and that's true just get a steam deck and dock it yeah but some people want a home console and they don't yeah. want a screen on it for some reason. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, yeah, I think having a device that is serves one purpose and does that thing really good, having an operating system that's built around that thing is super useful. Yeah. I never thought I would like Bazite because I'm taking my Windows computer, mm-hmm. my, I'm taking my Windows handheld, and I'm putting Linux on it and making it worse. I'm making it into a thing that does less stuff. Right. But it's really good at that less stuff. Yeah. So it makes it more fun to like just jump in and get into a game. I don't have to fuck around with the Windows yeah. ecosystem. Anyway. Uh, the idea behind the MU Deck machine is to make hardware easy just as MU Deck did with software. Uh, Dragoon Durais writes on the MU Deck Patreon. Uh, it is, this is not focused to tech savvy people. It is for people that want no hassle experience, just buy and play. They added on Reddit. I think that's admirable. What's inside. And you can see the previous yes. hardware specs. <laughs> so I don't think this article has an update. No, uh, none of the articles I, that originally reported on it have the Luckily, update. Luckily I have an update. So let's yes. look at this. Let's all take this in for a second. Right. There's two different versions. Yes. There's the EM1 and the EM2. The EM1 was $400. Yes. And it looked to be around the specs of a Steam Deck. Yeah. It looked to be around the same sort of... Uh, well, actually, no, less no. than that. Yeah, because uh, less than that. the EM1 was an Intel-based machine. Right. It had an Intel N97 CPU. It was going to have an Intel GPU. Uh, and it lists the game's that um they tested for it so, so my confusion is mm-hmm. uh it can emulate 
uh, Wii U, PlayStation 2, GameCube, all this stuff that I would emulate on like a Steam Deck right. or something. But it cannot play basically any AAA game. Right. <laughs> it's very uh, weak in that regard. So that's where my confusion was. It was $400, so that's around the price of a Steam Deck. Yes. So uh, that makes it seem like a weird price point. Yes. Then there's the EM2, mm -hmm. which uh, is a lot more powerful and uh, can play actual AAA stuff. Yes. Uh, the f and it lists the frame rates that it can get, uh, and they're they're all right. Yeah, they're they're what I would say, like, you know, for... For this type of device that's just plug and play, you know, those are not the type of people who want every game to run at 120 frames per second. They just want to play the game smoothly. And I think for all of these games, this is smooth enough. I think this would be a little more powerful than like an ROG Ally or a Lenovo. Yeah. Ago. I don't think it, it's not going to like blow it out of the water, though. It's still a really tiny device. Yeah. But I mean, like, you know. 88 frames per second for Forza Horizon 5, I think, is more than enough. Uh, Doom Eternal at 80, The Last of Us at 60. You know, I think those are good yeah. frame rates to hit for no, those types of games. No, it's fine for yeah. something that's the size of a Dreamcast. Yeah. Um, now, there's been an update. Uh, they, they, they tweeted today. So yes. this, this was announced, what, yesterday or two days ago? Two days ago, I think. So yesterday, or today, they, they tweeted, okay, okay, nobody liked the EM1, which is the cheap one. We heard you loud and clear, so we've killed it and added a new perk to the campaign, the Emudeck Machine DIY Kit. So things get weirder now. Yes. So the EM2 still exists. You could still get the EM2. But now there's a different perk, the DIY Kit. It's basically just the case. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically just the case, and you build the computer inside of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that works. Yeah. <sighs> they said it's an IT, It's a mini ITX case. This says ITX case. But okay. on Twitter, they said it was an, a mini ITX case. Okay. I, I guess well, that's I mean, the same. Either way, like, what does that mean? Like, what are what they giving you? What am I buying? Yeah. What do I have to buy exactly. now? If I want to DIY it, what am I buying? Because I, I can't imagine... Oh, just any old mini ITX motherboard is going to fit in this thing. Yeah. Because, like, they, you know, they're specifying that this is going to be an AMD machine running on an AMD processor with an AMD graphics card. Yeah. You know. Which I'm, is what, like, the handhelds are. Yeah. But I'm assuming they're not going to be providing that for $165. No, it is literally the case. You okay. are getting the case. Do you at least get a thumb drive with the OS on it? Or instructions on how to get the OS. That'll probably be open. Because Bazite's open. You yeah. can just download it. Uh, I'm sure they'll have their own fork of it somewhere available. And I'm sure that wouldn't be too hard. I'm sure putting this whole thing together won't be too hard. But I want right. to know what I have to buy. Yeah. Because it might just end up being the same price to get to the $700 version that has yeah. everything already there for you. Right. Now, I pre-ordered the $400 one. Yeah. Because I wanted this. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't justify... The seven hundred dollar one, something that's as powerful as a lot of devices that I have already. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to see the hardware. You know, I just wanted yeah. to see the physical box, and I'm just gonna emulate stuff anyway. I don't need yeah. to be playing uh friggin' uh, Elden Ring on this thing. I got other devices yeah. for that. I wanted to. I wanted this specifically for emulation, so I would have been fine with the four hundred dollar mm -hmm. one. Uh, I woke up today to uh, like a credit card thing that said like uh, <laughs> hey, we're giving you crediting you mu deck credited you four hundred dollars and i was right. like what the fuck uh and then i saw that they got rid of the tier that i that i bought mm -hmm. and uh yeah now i don't know what to do i haven't done i haven't pre-ordered either of them now because yeah. i don't know i don't know if i want to get the 700 hundred dollar one so i tweeted today uh basically god damn it i pre-ordered the one that they yeah. that they nixed and they said i know you did you and nobody else ha <laughs> So eat shit, idiot. I don't. Is that hyperbole, or am I literally the only one? I mean, they. I'm the only one that I know that they got tell this you on the like how many people have like claimed that reward. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. So there's like, only two people that got the DIY kit. So like, did you get converted to the? No, they just gave me my money back. They, okay. Yeah. So what if we go to the Wayback Machine? Ooh, it has to be pretty close. Yeah. You have so to do like 
this morning or yesterday. Hmm. I'm surprised that only two people got the DIY Failed. kit. Failed. Okay. Because the DIY kit is pretty cheap. What if I did... All right. Let's go to Indiegogo.com. Oh, are you telling me you're not... Only 22 people got right. the... Uh, we'll do yesterday Only at... 26 people got the, uh, the other one. Not... Not a lot of people are 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 up for this uh, console. Yeah, but let's... but somehow they're already a third of the way to their goal. <laughs> I don't know how that works. I mean, this is definitely like you want to talk about an enthusiast product. Another thing that we can get into is that uh, these are renders. Somebody said they're AI generated. I don't know if they are. They don't really look AI generated to me. Um, but. These are renders. There's been nothing produced, and they're not going to start production until after the Indiegogo. Yeah, so it's going to be a while to get one of these things. You pay them immediately. Yeah, when you, uh, 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 I don't know, give to the Indiegogo, um, they take your money immediately. So, I mean, they did refund me, so that's nice. Right. But yeah, you're kind of rolling the dice here with this one. This is probably going to take a really long time, too. It says estimated shipping December. That would be absolutely insane. Yeah. There's nothing produced yet. So. Will a framework motherboard fit in? Probably, but yeah. uh, I would... I want, like... I'm assuming this is going to be made for something in mind. Something yeah. specific to put in there. Because it's so small. It's probably not going to be that universal. It's not when the Wayback Machine is like. You know what? I'm going to drop this in chat. Somebody see if you can find a cached version of this site from yesterday or this morning. Oh, wait. Here we go. Uh, this is from yesterday. Uh, no, it says DIY kit. Somebody see if you can find a cached version of this site and see who purchased the... Uh, Four hundred dollar tier, the the cheap perk. Yeah. How many people? Did Bob dye his hair? I thought they tweeted it was drafted by AI, and then they changed it to what they wanted. Oh, I don't. I didn't hear that. I don't know. I like the design of it. Uh, see, it has four USB ports in the front. Uh. Four USB ports in the front. It uh, will support Bluetooth. Uh, so you can use your Bluetooth controllers if you really like. Also, there's this... It's got the ability to dock to, like, an external GPU. Yeah. To, like, give it more power or something. Uh, this render is weird because it's not flush and makes it feel weird. So, like, if it has the ability to dock to an external GPU... What's that going to look like? Is there going to be an expansion port on the bottom? What's that going to look like if you make your own version? Yeah. There's a lot of questions here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... I feel like this is a, as a machine with a lot of good intentions, but, like, this is a very specific use case that I don't know is, is going to have mass market appeal. I love the idea of it. Like, like yeah. I... Now that I've used Bazite and stuff, I really like the idea of having a device that only does mm -hmm. the thing, that only does the emu like it's one big powerful emulation yeah. machine. And you know what? If it's powerful enough, you can play all of your Steam games mm -hmm. on it and stuff. That's all really cool. Uh, but again, this is really early. Um, it's a little expensive. It's very expensive for, uh, what, for what it, you want it to do. It's yeah. If for what I wanted to do. Four hundred dollar one would have been fine. Yeah, and that's even that's still a little expensive. Yeah, um, seven hundred dollars uh is a lot, considering again you could just get a Steam Deck and yeah. do most of the stuff just fine. Um, but if it's something that'll just plug and play, that's totally cool too. Yeah, that, that, that I can understand the appeal, but that's a lot of money to gamble on something people who have never made hardware before. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like the software that they make, so I have faith in that, but I don't think i could gamble 700 dollars on a piece of hardware that is just a render at this point yeah you know that's all that's a lot to ask um what else did i want to say um i forgot <laughs> um i'm trying to think of like what would 
So do we know what systems it supports in terms of emulation? According to Ars Technica, it will support uh, PS3 and Xbox 360 emulation. Acqu yes. Uh, the previous one, the mm -hmm. one that I pre-ordered, could not do PS3 and Xbox 360. Right. This can. Okay. That's what I wanted to mention. Uh, they show pictures of like, they say automatic and zero config retro games Steam library. Somebody tweeted at me saying that uh, this was concerning because it would come with ROMs. Right. And I was like, I don't think that's what this means. I think this means that it's going to be set up. It's going to have configuration files in it so that yeah. the ROMs that you provide will play the best way that they can. And uh, MUDEC responded and was like, uh, yeah, like there are zero, there are zero uh, uh, ROMs mm -hmm. and no BIOS files. Uh, but all the emulators will be there. Um, and all the configuration files will be there. So right. this thing will be, hopefully, uh, I mean, the goal is to make it so that you just turn it on, drop your ROMs in there, and it should be the easiest emulation experience yeah. possible because that's MUDEC's goal. And I really like that. I like mm -hmm. that they do that. Uh, but again, a new piece of hardware from these guys uh, that, that have never made hardware before. So I'm a little skeptic. Yeah. I'd imagine this would be pretty hard to get your hands on after the fact. Um, probably all unless, these things are always like that, right? Unless they are able to, you know, use the capital from this to bring it to not mass market, but like to continue to produce it after the campaign. Yeah, probably not because usually, you know, Kickstarters and Indiegogo's like this, you know, once it's done, whoever paid money gets the machine, whoever didn't. Yeah, that's the you thing. Know, is out about of luck. Because with an Indiegogo or crowdfunding of this kind, mm -hmm. you usually get a general idea of how many people want it. Yeah. So you produce based on that. And then after that happens, people make reviews, other people get their hands on, it, and then more people want it is the yeah. goal. But then it's hard to gauge, you know, how many you need to make after mm -hmm. that. So usually it's hard to get after the fact. So again, it's a gamble. Uh, if you want it, you got to kind of buy in early, but you're yeah. kind of gambling your money away, especially at the expensive one. That's why I only wanted the cheap one was because I didn't want to gamble seven hundred dollars. I was yeah. more comfortable gambling four hundred dollars. But again, I like MU Deck. They uh, we talked about them recently. I think I made a whole video uh, because. I checked out the Android version of MU Deck, uh, mm -hmm. and I had a lot of problems with it. And then they made a Bob update that had all yes. of the problems that I, they fixed all the problems that I had with it. So they're very receptive. So that's yeah. really nice. They're very receptive to criticism. In fact, they're so receptive, they got rid of one of the tiers <laughs> and changed it. So, uh, you know what? Tweet at them if you think, uh, if you have problems with it, or if you think uh, things should be different, or if you like it, you should tweet at them because they're pretty receptive with that stuff. Um, if you think it should be a different way or if you think you can help out in some way. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm going to keep my eye on it. Again, I don't know what to do. I don't know if I should get the DIY one. I'm going to yeah. need to know a lot more information about the DIY one. There's my criticism. Tell me more about the <laughs> DIY version. Yeah. Uh, so I can consider whether or not it's uh, worth getting. Like what sort of hardware am I going to need to be able to use that? Right. Like what's it going to be built? For? All right. That's it for the fake dream. Game. Yeah. Uh, uh, we I missed some uh, stuff on YouTube here. Farmer Gooch, thanks for the five bucks as always. Uh, thanks for paying your dues. And Lucas Blucas, thanks for the five ruples. There's an R there. I think that's ruples, yeah. I've been watching you guys since the Switch dock days. Thanks for the years of goodness. Also, how likely is Big N to go after the MU Deck project? So... That's interesting. Yeah, they haven't gone after other clone consoles before. That's because most of them are Chinese and it'd be really hard for them to, right. to do that. Uh, I think it's very unlikely. Uh, the biggest uh, thing that would get Nintendo to come after you is if you use their IP for marketing. Right. Uh, now, notably on this Indiegogo page, Nintendo is nowhere to be found. Yeah. They show like a mock retro library here. Yeah. Not a single game there is Nintendo. And I I have a theory here. I think that all of these games yes. have ROMs on Steam. 
Okay. Like I think like Sonic you can get on Steam. Yes. Uh I saw there's a James Pond collection on Steam, so I'd imagine yeah. you can get that. Uh Yeah, Rocket Knight I think has a Steam Rocket version. Knight Bubsy. I'm pretty sure there's Street Fighter. I'm pretty sure all of these games have ROMs you can acquire. Yeah. So that might be on purpose. Yeah. And that is very smart. Mm -hmm. I like the way they're approaching this. From a legal standpoint. Yeah. Um so I think I mean Nintendo could do whatever they want. They right. they're they have a lot of money and they have a lot of lawyers. Yeah. So they could come after you for fucking anything and yep. probably win. Uh but I don't see anything this seems completely clean to me. I don't think they have any ground to stand on if they aren't providing uh the games themselves on the device. Because the, the whole thing is like selling an emulator is okay, but selling the ROMs is what gets you in trouble. Yeah. So I think... And using the IP to yes. promote your product. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and again, they don't have BIOS files. Mm -hmm. They don't have ROM. Yeah. So it seems like uh, everything is very clean cut. Mm -hmm. LJ says, almost looks like you'd need an ITX motherboard and processor. The DIY kit looks like it is just for the case and the PSU. Yes. But again... The case is so small. I think you're going to need some specific shit. Like, yeah. I, I'm not willing. I'm going to assume that uh, not any ITX motherboard is just going to work. Yeah. I feel like you're going to need something pretty specific. Put it in there. Do you think it could run Switch? Uh, the expensive one, probably. I mean, a Steam Deck can. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? Original Spiff, thanks for the 28 months. This 100% makes me want the analog 64 console. Forgot about that. Yeah, no uh, no word on that. We don't even know what it looks like. No. We just had the vague like yeah. uh, black picture. The vague threat of a Nintendo 64 <laughs> console made by analog. Uh, which was supposed to come out this year. True. Well, there's still time. Yeah. Not I think yet. there's a ton of 30-ish gamers. I think, I guess, 30-year-old-ish. Yeah. Who just want their old library on advice with more options for support. I know that there are because yeah. uh, I have a whole YouTube channel where I'm talking yeah. about that. All right. Uh, moving on. Let's talk about Concord. Everyone's talking about Concord. Yes. An important update on Concord. This is from the official PlayStation blog. Uh, Concord fans, we've been listening closely to your feedback since the launch of Concord on PlayStation 5 and PC and want to thank everyone who has joined the journey uh, aboard the North Star. Your support and the passionate community that has, ground, uh, that has ground around the game has meant the world to us. However, while many uh, qualities of the experience resonated with players, we also recognize that other aspects of the game and our initial launch didn't land the way we intended. Therefore, at this time, we have decided to take the game offline beginning September 6th, 2024 and explore options, including those that will better reach our players. Uh, while we determine the best, the best path ahead, Concord sales will cease immediately and we will begin to offer full refunds for all the gamers who have purchased the game on PC or PS5. If you purchase the game for the PlayStation 5 from the PlayStation Store or PlayStation Direct, a refund will be issued back to your original payment method. Consumers who purchased from other digital storefronts will also be refunded. More information about refunds from Steam and Epic can be found below. Uh, once refunded, players will no longer have access to the game. Uh, we will keep you updated and thank you again to those. Uh, thank you again to all the free gunners who have joined us in the Concord Galaxy. So that's crazy. Yeah. So this game came out mm -hmm. August 23rd. Yeah. And it is being removed September 6th. That's insane. That's <laughs> so fast. Yeah. That's how much this game bombed. That is. That is exactly two weeks. Yeah. That is a two week lifespan on a video game. Yeah. That's, on a major first party yeah. video game. Yeah. That is completely unheard of. So yeah. I think that might be the record for the fastest AAA game uh, uh, life support pull. Yeah. You know, that might yeah. be the, the quickest death of a game. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to look this up. It's hard to look up. Uh, but an article from The Gamer had, like, a list of, like, quickest deaths of live service games. Yeah. 
Uh, and none of them were quick. The only one yeah. that was quick was this one, uh, Radical Heights. Remember Radical yeah. Heights? This was Cliff Bolinsky's, uh, uh, like, yeah, PUBG style game. This lasted around one month, and that is still longer than Concord. Yeah, uh, and this was a little smaller than Concord too. Um, so that's insane. Yeah. Uh, also, this is a very expensive thing to do. To yes. to. To, to put all that time and money into a game and all of us just yank it after two weeks. Yeah, and issue refunds. Yeah. Like, good on them for issuing refunds. Yeah. Uh, everybody just got a free game. Yeah. Uh, but that costs them money. It's not mm -hmm. just, like, an even exchange. Like, like they have to pay the refund, yeah. you know? Uh, going through Steam, like, Steam's keeping their 30%, yeah. you know? <laughs> so... Uh, I had a Verge. Uh, I found a Verge article that uh, gives just gives some specs. Uh, estimated sales uh, are under twenty five thousand. Uh, Concord also managed to hit an all time peak of six hundred and ninety seven players on Steam, which was lower than the launch peak of Lord of the Rings Gollum. Whoa! Yeah, that was a meme game. That was a meme game. So that's yeah. the peak. That, that was people the, played it on Steam? Yes. Like, uh, concurrently, like all at once. Yes. Okay. Which was lower than the peak amount of people who played the worst game of 2023. <laughs> I wonder how long it would take you to get into a game of a Concord? Concord because no one's playing. It. Yeah. Well, especially now that, it, well, I'm sure there's probably some crazy people who are like, oh, uh, we got to play Concord. Save uh, Concord. I'm in the Twitch directory. <laughs> I'm in the Twitch directory right now. Let's see. B guns. He's in the game. I've there never actually watched the game. I yeah, I don't know anything about it beyond like the initial like trailers for it, like the the ones that turned everybody off to the game to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that was the problem with the game. For all accounts, like the game is like whatever. It's another live service shooter. But the fact that it's another live service shooter that is clearly trying to be you know a guardians of the galaxy style fun romp you know those are a dime a dozen we got plenty of those that do everything that concord does better so there is no need you know for another game like this to come out especially when sony has other games like that like marathon coming out and they own destiny and you know what else whatever else is there all of those that you just mentioned are doing great. <laughs> um, so it looks like everyone's in a game. It looks like right. the, the games are going fine. Also, I'd imagine most people are playing this on PlayStation, so like yeah. the Steam numbers aren't that important. Right. But still sold pretty bad. Well, It's the, also interesting that they made it a paid game yeah. when it should probably have been free to play. Right. You know, you say this, you know, it's a PlayStation game. So like that, you know, maybe the PlayStation number should be what's important. But you think about Helldivers, yeah. which exploded on PC. Yeah. So clearly there's some hope that like, you know, the new strategy of releasing your online games on PS5 and PC would repeat the success of Helldivers. But, you know, just because Helldivers did it doesn't mean that Concord's going to do it. Right. Yeah. I think Helldivers was a special type of magic that uh, this isn't going to capture. No. At all. No. Um, so also notably, uh, I saw on threads, remember threads? Oh yeah. I remember threads. Wario 64 threaded. Uh, he got this email right after the, the death of Concord. Yeah. Uh, don't sit this one out. Wario 64, <laughs> you were checking out Concord. We can't say, uh, we blame you. You're just a few clicks away from making it yours. So what are you waiting for? Uh, I believe it was also Wario 64 who... Uh, posted on Twitter. Remember Twitter? <laughs> uh, the Concord Special Edition controller is still available. It's right here. Ooh, should probably snap. Uh, uh, that's ugly as fucking all hell. Let it, me see that. I think it kind of looks cool. <laughs> it's like got that like seventies retro future look. Eh, it's no, I kind of no, I kind of no. like it. Yeah. it uh, Eighty five dollars though is way too much. I mean, for, it's gonna for go a, on eBay for, for a, a meme lot. controller. They ain't, you ain't going to be able to get that soon. I know. So, yeah, it's an interesting choice that they decided to sell this thing instead of just making it free to play. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, to be fair, the blog post does say at this time we've decided to take the game offline and explore options, including uh, those that will better reach our players. So that kind of like, 
I guess leaves the door open to bring it back as a free to play game. But like, maybe who's gonna, if nobody was willing to buy it, who's gonna want to play it for free? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, this, this also brings up another question of like, uh, <laughs> games preservation because, yeah. uh, you're never going to be able to play this game again. Well, I did see people going by the physical version of Concord just to have, you know, yeah. but like not that that's going to do anything. Well, yeah, what are you going to do? Uh -huh. That by taking it offline, they should open it up for public servers or or, or yeah. something. Um I mean, but wh whatever. Uh we all saw this coming. This game looked like shit anyway. Yeah. But I mean, like two weeks, that's not enough time to like even try to make the game worthwhile. I don't you know, know what the hope was. I don't I know think if there was, was any hope I think here. it was uh, Warframe who said like, you know, live service games need to like survive, need to like last for a while yeah. in order for like for the game to get good, to build a player base to so, like, you know, add features that like people would want to see added, you know, but we're seeing more and more like the like the live service model just isn't not only is it not sustainable, like, you know, it costs too much money, you know, for the bet of a bigger return. So in April of last year, mm -hmm. uh, Sony made a statement that they had purchased Firewalk Studios. Yeah. And we had talked about it on the podcast. Yes. In April of last year. Uh, and I watched it back. <laughs> and uh, it was unclear for a bit who firewalk studios even was or what they did right we thought it was a support studio but it turned out it wasn't a support because mm. google got it wrong google was wrong about what firewalk studios were. right and it turns out it was x bungie developers okay uh so i guess sony was uh, they must have been working on this game already because a year is... they said that they've been working on this game for eight years and that's not enough <laughs> So, uh, Sony saw X Bungie developers, I guess, and yeah. they saw live service, and they were like, "All right, we gotta, you know, grab this up and yeah. and, and and make it make it a big deal." Uh, and that didn't work out. Yeah. So it's not looking good for uh, anybody related to Bungie. <laughs> yeah, I think also too, like this is you know buying Firewalk and releasing a live service game. This date, this was part of the Jim Ryan administration at Sony. He made a big push to like put out a lot of live service games and we're starting to see we're finally starting to see the end of that because I think once he left Sony realized like that's not that's not what we do and that's not good for business long term, but like it has really crippling effects. You know, this game didn't do well, so they're pulling it, which probably means their Firewalk is going to suffer massive layoffs or get shut down completely. Yeah, and it's really not entirely their fault yeah um I, i'm less skeptical about uh live service games i think the big issue with live service games is that a lot has to go into them and it's very easy for it all to fall apart yeah it's very easy for it to be a huge waste of money and for it to fail miserably yeah uh and that's the problem yeah and and, and but when you have one that works, it it's insane and makes right. a whole lot of money. And that's why companies are willing to put everything into it, which probably isn't the right move. No, it's the definitely move not is the right. probably yeah. like what the Warframe dev said and and do your uh, uh bare minimum and then work on it and right. tweak it and fix it out. Right now you have Deadlock, which is uh Valve's uh free to play hero mm -hmm. shooter. Uh, which I guess you could consider a live service game if you're calling Concord a live service game. Um, and that's free and it's in beta and it is rough as all hell. Yeah. But they're working on it and they're going to tweak it and they're going to make it better based right. on everybody's feedback. Uh, so that will hopefully make it grow. And that's not easy either. Yeah. But that's a way so that you don't have to blow all of your resources and then fire everybody at the studio when things don't work. You yeah. have to put... You have to massage it. You need to put some things into it at like post launch because it's a live service game. Also of note, remember that Amazon anthology show secret level about the video yeah. game? There was supposed to be a Concord episode. Oh fuck. <laughs> 
Is there still going to be a Concord episode? As far as I know. I mean, they... Sure, they already I, made yeah, it. Yeah, they probably made <laughs> yeah. it. That's, that's weird to make a whole TV show around a game that hasn't come out yet. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that was supposed to be like big marketing money. Yeah, they probably there. Yeah, we, we're going to promote our game. And that's another problem. Yeah. Sony put too, way too much fucking stock in this game. Yeah. Well. Anyway, uh, that's Concord. Yeah. Uh, sad. I don't listen. I don't like when games do bad. Yeah. I mean, just because, <laughs> you know, the game didn't look interesting to us doesn't mean that, like, it deserves to get pulled or, you know, the devs are in danger of, like, getting in trouble for something that is ultimately, you know, not their fault. I would have liked, I would like to see Sony put some effort into fixing the game. Like, yeah. Like, making it more worth it to people. Yeah. But, but like, I don't know what they would do. The game, it kind of looks, just the whole concept of the game looks yeah. terrible. <laughs> so. You know, they're, but I mean, like, two weeks Two That's weeks is insane. not enough time. Like yeah. two weeks for a live service game is nothing. Like that is not enough time to gauge like player experience, sales, you know, usability over time, any of that shit. Yeah, that's groundbreaking. Yeah. Uh, having a turn. And, and it sets a quick. bad precedent. Yeah. You know, Suicide Squad is still up and running <laughs> and playable. It's not selling well. They just laid off a bunch of people at Rocksteady. Yeah. But like that game's still out there. They are yeah. at least still trying to make, you know, f chicken soup out of chicken shit, as the saying goes. <laughs> I've never heard that. Um, okay, uh, we can move on to, uh, what is this? Uh, PS5 Pro leaks. I, I haven't even heard of this. Yeah, this, um, when did this happen? Uh, August 29th. So yeah, over the weekend, like, it kind of like came up uh, a new report on the PS5 Pro has revealed an alleged new information about the unannounced console. Uh, in an article on Deal Labs, reliable PlayStation leaker uh, Biblicoon, uh said the final name of the mid-gen refresh is indeed the PS5 Pro and published a sketch of its design based on what it claimed to be the final packaging box of the new console. Ooh. The sketch shown above... Uh, shows a console design similar to the existing PS5 Slim, white in color and with two USB-C ports and a power button on the front. Uh, but there are three black stripes in the middle of the outer layer of the PS5 Pro that are not found on the base console. Bill Bill Kuhn uh, noted that the PS5 Pro appears to be thicker than the PS5 Slim. The PS5 Pro seen by Bill Bill Kuhn does not include a disk drive. It's unclear whether Sony plans to also release a version with the disk drive. Oh boy. A price is not mentioned either, and the controller remains the base uh, DualSense. Bill Bokun expects Sony to announce a PS5 Pro during the first half of September 2024. IGN has asked Sony for a comment. So, is this sketch on the box? Allegedly, this is um, or, on the package. Or did he draw this based on what he saw on the box <laughs> uh publish a sketch of its design based on what is claimed to be the final packaging box yeah so it's a sketch based on what is on the box okay i was this, this doesn't look like something that would be on the box no that's not very sony right uh that's, that's what we're that's where we're at right now right is, is fucking people <laughs> Drawing what they see on the box. Uh, but this looks very plausible. Yeah. What if this guy has never seen a PlayStation 5 Slim before? And he's like, this, is, this must be the pro. <laughs> <laughs> this. I mean, but it's got the fins. You know, does, for does wind the, resistance. Does the pro not have the fins? I mean, the Slim? No, the, slim, the Slim's got the one stripe down the middle. But this one's got the three. Okay, this has the three. Yeah. It's, it's pretty different. But it has kind of fins. It's they're a well, lot this smaller. Also, too, this is allegedly like thicker. The than, top looks exactly the same as as the slim. This is allegedly thicker than the PS5 slim. Okay, so it doesn't look like it based on the right. Picture. Well, again, this is just the dude's sketch. So it's got the it's got the extra stripes to show that it's yeah. pro. Uh, I'd imagine there's going to be a disc version. If there's no disc version, people are going to go fucking nuts. Well, I mean, Sony is selling a disc drive for their PS5 Slim. It would be, you know, I wouldn't put it past them. Because, like, pricing oh, for this generation is insane. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 
that makes a lot of sense. And that's why there's probably a stripe. Yeah. So that that ver that disc drive can, can fit in this. fit right on here. Yeah. That makes so much sense. And I, I honestly wouldn't put it past them to just release the digital only version of the PS5 Pro because they just increased the price of the PS5 again in Japan. Yeah. The pricing structure of this generation has been insane. You know, this the PS5 never got a price decrease. So if anything, it got a price increase. I heard people arguing about the price of this, and they were saying like upwards of seven hundred dollars. I would not be surprised. I, this is going to be very expensive. And you know, what? and honestly, I think because people are buying handhelds at seven hundred dollars, Sony's going to look at that and say we can get away with selling this for seven hundred dollars. Uh, we can get away with selling this for eight hundred dollars because this is a premium home console. I'm starting to think it's not going to have a disc drive. Yeah. And you're going to have to buy it separately yep. because of the price. Yeah. Because th that's a way to skimp on the price. Even though disc drives like aren't a lot of money. No. Like but, they're not that crazy. But Sony found a way to create a proprietary disk drive that you need and that you need to register yeah. when you hook it up to your system. Don't they own Bluetooth? Yeah. I'm not Bluetooth. Uh, Blue, Blu-ray. Blu Blu yeah. yeah. And Bluetooth. Well, they had like a hand. That, like. Well, I think they're like part of the Bluetooth consortium or whatever. But yeah, yeah. They, are, they created the Blu-ray drive. Like the patents in their name. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. They're just like, fuck it. You don't get to have mm -hmm. it. But like... The thing is, the PlayStation 5 Pro is for people, uh, the PlayStation 5 period is for just normies walking into Target and being like, oh, wait, I want that. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't think people, I don't think most people even care anymore about whether or not it has a disk drive. I don't think they're going to look at that and go, I don't want that. It doesn't have a disk drive. Yeah. I think they're going to buy it and then, and then afterwards go, oh, wait, it doesn't have a disk drive. I guess I'll just download everything. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've I think we finally hit that point because yeah. I mean, like, if you go into Target, there's no disc based games yeah. really anymore. Um, like we like, care, yeah, like, we we care for preservation sake. But like, by the same time, like, I'm still don't understand. Like, I mean, I, I understand from a business standpoint, get a new PlayStation out there that's like higher power, costs more. But like, did the PS4 Pro sell significantly high? Did the Xbox uh, One X sell that much more? Like, do these mid-cycle refreshes, like, of more, slightly more powerful hardware, did that really move the needle in any meaningful way? I still don't know. I, yeah. I can't imagine they did. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, they keep making them, so maybe. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm just as confused about that. We need to, like, actually look into that, because we always yeah. talk about how... how... No, because they, they're sneaky. They combine them all into one. You yeah, know? That's true. That's true. Um, yeah, I mean, this seems totally plausible now that now that we have talked it out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I feel like I would have to get this. Uh, I didn't get the Slim. Right. Because I don't use my PlayStation at all. Yeah. And there just didn't seem like anything to talk about with, yeah, this, yeah. with the Slim. It's just a slimmer version. Uh, the Pro, I feel like I would need to try it and see what's different about it. I can't even imagine, like, what... I mean, some games will yeah. have a better frame rate. Yeah, honestly, like I don't see this outputting 8K at all. No, I don't, not a know. single game uses 8K yeah. right now. One game, The Taurus, and it doesn't yeah. even actually use 8K. So yeah, I just I last gen sure you could argue that you know of mid cycle refresh that outputs in 4K like kind of makes sense. Now there's none of this, this makes even less sense. No, a mid cycle iteration made sense. A slim made sense. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't really make much mm -hmm. sense unless it fucking makes games perform awesome. Yeah. But I don't think it's going to. I think it's everything's going to be like a very small marginal bump. Yeah. All right. Uh, we we got to we got to do uh backlog 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 Hey everybody, it's time to do the backlog. Will, what's the backlog? Backlog is a segment of the Wolf Den Podcast where we go through our entire video game collection. Every game we have ever bought it gets put into an Excel spreadsheet. And today we are going to pick one at random and talk about it regardless of whether or not we have played it. How many games are on that list? 972. Right and 593 is the game. 593. It is... 
All right, this is kind of a cheat. It's the God of War saga for the PlayStation 3. This is a collection of God of War games that contains the original God of War trilogy plus the two PSP games. Okay, so have you played this game? I have played God of War 1, and that's it. <laughs> so I just found a walkthrough from Big Game Boss on YouTube. Yeah. It is 34 hours long <laughs> of the first three games. I guess. It's so long that the YouTube uh, player says one day and 10 hours. On the oh, bottom. Jesus Christ. I don't know if you did. Yeah, there is. So yeah, the God of War saga is a collection of five God of War games. The PlayStation 3 released as part of Sony's PlayStation Collections line on August 28th, 2012. Um, it was not released outside of North America. So suck it. Europe. That's interesting. Uh, the collection includes God of War, God of War 2, God of War 3, God of War Chains of Olympus, and God of War Ghosts of Sparta. It features two Blu-ray discs, God of War 1 and 2 on the first one, and God of War 3 on the second, and a voucher to download Chains of Olympus and Ghosts of Sparta. The games retain the same features as their PS3 releases. The collection also includes exclusive bonus content and a voucher for one month of PlayStation Plus. And so you can play the PSP games on the playstation 3 right yes but yeah. fun fact that voucher had an expiration date so by the time i was ready to redeem it i couldn't that's, that's really dumb yeah that's insane yeah so could you download those on the psp as well or no oh Yo, yeah it gets saved to your account okay so like it's sa get saved to your place so it's account. not like a up res version or anything no it's, it's your literally like... just the psp versions and so yeah. are these remastered versions they have to be right yeah, they're not like the PS2 games are. They're PS, they're PS2 games, but they're like mostly just up res to the PlayStation 3. I think they output in 1080p, smoother I'm frame rate. Pretty sure this is the first game that he's started with. Yeah, this I'd is imagine. the first game, and uh, this looks great. Yeah, for a for a PlayStation 2 game that's up res on the PlayStation 3. I mean, even good. on the PlayStation 2, God of War one and two were shockingly good looking games. Like they came out in like 2004 and 2005, mm -hmm. or 2005, 2006 respectively. So it's like the end of the generation, but like. You know, they look, they didn't look like PS2 games. They looked like, you know, first gen uh, PS3 games or even like a top tier Xbox game. These were used as like a benchmark for PlayStation 2. People yeah. uh, really loved the God of War series. People yeah. uh, assimilated that with Sony and, yeah. and, and, and PlayStation 2. And uh, it was some of people's favorite PlayStation 2 games. Yeah. So. Uh, and, you know, if you were to play these games now, though, uh, and you're only like used to the modern god of war games completely different night and day <laughs> yeah i i mean you you have the same sort of like uh uh hack and slash stuff going on yeah but like i mean the combat is way more complex than the newer ones yeah it's but, it's overly complex but the new he, ones. also it's like silly over the top violent and uh sexualized yeah there's like a lot of like uh, gratuitous gratuitous shit going yeah. on. Uh and that is different in the newer God of Wars. Yeah. In the what was it, 2018 God of War? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 2018, that was a huge tonal shift for God of War. Yeah. So those are completely different types of games. Yeah. Uh God of War 2018 and Ragnarok are what they call sad dad games. Yep. This is um this is like a roid rage game where you literally just like move forward and destroy everything in your path. But you know what? You know, for the time and even now, like sometimes you just want to walk straight and destroy everything in your path with yeah. very little context, you know, and like this game provides, it gives you the satisfaction of just, you know, destroying. It's like, it's like going to, um, like one of, one of those places that that's popular where you just smash TVs with sledgehammers. Yeah. We got, we got one of those, uh, nearby actually. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's that satisfaction of just like you know destroying a sandcastle or whatnot yeah no i get that i never played these games because uh we got a playstation 2 kind of late yeah we and, got... and i just kind of didn't really need this i feel like i missed it because uh they came out before we even got a playstation 2 and then uh i played other like similar hack and slash games and third person uh adventure games and yeah i don't need my third person adventure games to be over the top violent and that's what this this <laughs> seemed like the same as those games yeah but you can rip people in half and like i didn't i don't really need that right but i i think this i don't know if that's i don't know if necessarily this is the right way but like i think it tried to go one step further by having like a fairly well told story uh a very well done voice acting 
you know, it tried to actually sh tell a story of someone who had fallen to his lowest point and was given the option of redemption. It's just that his form of redemption is the most violent form of redemption right. possible. Um, you know, in the first game, you know, you do become the god of war, the Greek god of war. Um, and then the second and third game is all about you trying to kill Zeus, the final Greek god, and basically destroying the entire Greek pantheon. Um, so it it does try to like it does try to tell a story, you know, I'll be, you know, whether or not it like holds up in this day and age, especially compared to like the newer God of Wars where yeah. like story is the entire focus. I get it. It's like a big grand epic and it gets bigger and bigger in scale the more the more you go through the game. Yeah. Uh and it seems really cool. Yeah. I just feel like I I completely missed it. Uh I'm sure they're good on the PSP and the Vita. Uh those games. Yeah. Uh there's not like I've been, you know, doing like PSP emulation and Vita emulation, mm -hmm. and there just really isn't that many I can play. Yeah. <laughs> so uh My understanding is like th those games do like capture the spirit of the PS2 games very well. Mm -hmm. You know, because those games, like, even though you know they're graphically impressive, like they're fairly simple. They're really just, you know, old fashioned beat 'em ups and hack and slashes. Yeah, so those might be good uh to try on a handheld. Yeah. Yeah. Um and also, too, like, you know, in the wake of God of War, there were a lot of God of War clones out there. A lot of games saw the success of this and tried to emulate in their own way uh, the Darksiders. Uh, the Darks... No, Darksiders. Darkstalkers is a funny name. Darksiders series tried to do this. Uh, Dante's Inferno tried to... Yes. Dante's Inferno was literally this. Dante's Inferno I played. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was okay. Yeah. But it was literally just, it was literally just God, God, of God of War, like, years after God of yeah. War. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of a cheat cause it's five games, technically three cause the voucher doesn't work anymore. <laughs> um, but if you want to play God of war and you have a PlayStation three, this is a great way to do it. Uh, I, I don't know what the status of the God of war, the original God of war games are right now. I know they remastered God of war three for PlayStation four. I don't know if the first two games are playable right now on PS4 or PS5. Um, I mean, Sony used to do this back in the PS3 day because, like, you couldn't play PS2 games. So they would just re-release PS2 games in collections like this. Like, they did the Jack and Daxter series, the Sly Cooper series. They did the Resistance series. I don't like hate this. that. I think yeah, that's I fun. think that's a, that's a good way to, especially older games, yeah. you know, get them out there. Uh, I would like to see them do this now. Like that, do like a PS5 collection of these God of War games, or like yeah. you know the the Ratchet and Clank game. You know? Yeah. So, uh, how far did you get in the first? one? I didn't get very far. Okay. I know. I I I mean, honestly, I played the the original game on a PS2. I didn't even play this. <laughs> you know, I had it because like I wanted to play them, and I have them in case I ever get the time to play them. But my PS3 is in storage right now. <laughs> okay so i will not be playing it i get the idea yeah uh hey thanks for watching the backlog everybody uh we'll uh get you on a podcast everybody who's watching the podcast you stay yeah everyone who's watching the backlog goodbye bye uh will everyone wants to see your shirt it's a porg you gotta, there, you go. there you go there she is I don't know if this shirt is a keeper or get tossed in the donate pile. It's like on the cusp of being too is small for my no, oh. it's too small for my fat frame. Okay. <laughs> uh, next up, speaking of Star Wars, speaking of Star Wars, Star Wars Outlaws players are losing progress. Now this is interesting mm -hmm. because our YouTube representative was talking to me about. So I have like a meeting with him like every month or so, right? And it's only like a half an hour. Mm -hmm. And for 20 minutes, we talked about Star Wars Outlaws. <laughs> um, and yeah, he lost his four hours of progress or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it was unclear to me whether or not he needed to uh, delete his save. But Okay. A new we'll Star see. Wars Outlaws patch released specifically for PlayStation 5 um, has affected some players' save data. Last night, Ubisoft sent out an email to certain PS5 players and informed them that they are required to install the latest patch intended to address a series of bugs as well as implement a 40 frames per second mode. Ugh, excuse me. 
uh, which seemingly wasn't presented which seemingly wasn't present in some copies at launch. However, the publisher noted that patch 1.000.002 may cause save files to become corrupted and advise players to start fresh. Otherwise, they'll, they'll be faced with game progression issues. To best experience the Outer Rim, we rolled out a maintenance um, to make sure that everyone is playing the latest version of the game, the email reads via IGN. Uh, as, as one of the players affected who had access to an older version of the game, we are aware you might you might encounter some issues after this recent patch. Uh, we sincerely apologize for any inconvenience this may have caused. So, anybody in the chat, have you played Star Wars Outlaws and have you uh, tried... Have you lost progress is what I'm saying. Like, have you had a corrupt save or a save that... I want to know what happens if you don't start the game over. Right. Like, what was the consequences? Right. Um... It's important to note that this article was posted on August 29th. Yes. And at the time the article's release, Star Wars Outlaws official release date was August 30th. Yep. Which means that this issue was affecting players who bought the expensive editions, the $110 gold edition or the $130 ultimate edition, which gave you the ability to play the game early. Yes. Or reviewers, but yeah. mostly people who right got to play the game early, like like, like I think our YouTube representative. <laughs> yeah, uh, and the, but that's the thing—he got the email mm -hmm. and he just uh, started the game over. Right. I would have gotten the email and said, "I'm fucking playing. I'm not redoing the game. Yeah. I'm not playing another four hours. I'm gonna see what happens. You know, I want to know what happens if right. you just kept playing." Uh. This article goes on to actually have some quotes from players. A uh, bit of a bummer because I spent several hours in it last night and restarting would kill a lot of hype for the game for me, according to one Reddit user. Another said, I'm disgusted. I paid $110 and played all night, 12-hour stretch. This is how Ubisoft thanks us. Uh, yep. <laughs> Ubisoft has since released another statement via Games Radar that provides some additional context into the matter, as well as offered compensa compensation rewards for players affected by the issue, including a trinket for their ship and a Ubisoft Connect unit. You're entitled to compensation. Yeah. On August 27th, our team identified an issue where some PS5 players were playing on previous versions of the game. Uh, we quickly deployed an update and informed affected players to ensure their game was updated to the latest version and advised that they begin a new save to avoid additional issues and progression blockers. Uh, we followed up with affected PS5 players today to inform them we have provided them an in-game trailblazer trinket as well as 100 Ubisoft credits. Um, to redeem for in-game rewards to make their return to the Outer Rim a little more special. Kind of unacceptable. Yeah. Like, we expect a day one patch, for sure. Uh, but the day one is the game. The day the game comes out. Yeah. Especially if you pay $130. Yeah. So, so you can't just be like, oh, sorry, all of your progress means nothing. Especially yeah. for a single-player game. Yeah. Like, maybe if this was a fucking multiplayer game. It feels like you're playing for the, you're paying for their beta testing. Yeah. You know? Like, the people who paid a little extra, you know, for the three days they're playing, Ubisoft is just collecting data, and it's like, oh, we have to release a patch. Is there another case of a game releasing and then them being like, sorry, we're updating and you're going to lose all your progress. I know there's cases of like oh, there being game breaking bugs in a yeah. game where like your progress gets stinted, but I've never seen a company be like, you should probably start over. Like that's <sighs> crazy. Yeah, I don't. But again, I mean, I'm sure it exists. I still don't have a solid answer as to what the bug is. Like yeah. what would happen if you kept playing? Because again, I would keep playing because I'm not fucking starting holy, the game. Holy play. lettuce. Did some, uh, someone did the math on the trinket. It is a dollar in compensation. <laughs> My God. So, yeah, this is another, uh, you know, effect. What? The game release says that uh, some bugs may prevent story progression if you don't start That's what over. they said. Yeah. That's, uh, we know that. But what is this? What is it? I want to know what the bug is. You probably get to a certain point in the game. You can't progress. I know, but I, wanna, I want yeah. verifiable proof that that actually happens. Uh, underscore on PC last night after a restart, I had to move from my other SSD to my C drive to get it loading again. I did not play, I did not play a pre-release. Yeah, the game is a little rough around the edge. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So I played it. 
Uh, the absolute worst part about the game is uh, if you want to get it on PC, you got to get it on Ubisoft, Connect, yeah. which is a different launcher. Uh, if you type in uh, Star Wars Outlaws PC, one of the first links that comes up is the Steam page that just has nothing on it. It's the <laughs> Steam search for yeah. Star Wars Outlaws. Um, so I was like, where the fuck do I get this game? Oh, yeah, that's right. Ubisoft Connect. So I had to log into Ubisoft Connect. I haven't done that in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I downloaded the game. Uh, it took me a, an absurdly long time to do it for some reason. Uh, it downloaded. And then I started playing the game. And I started playing it in the living room on my like living room PC. Yeah. Uh, I started playing it. Got like an hour or two into the game. And then I came down here and I took my handheld over there. Right. And I decided to download it on that. This, this is why it took a long time, too. I was trying to download it on Bazite. Okay. And I have you, I have downloaded a Ubisoft Connect game before on Linux, and I just fucking gave up. <laughs> uh, I downloaded a, a Prince of Persia. Okay. And I remember that being kind of a little bit of a pain. I remember it being a pain in the ass, but there being an easy solution, and I forgot the easy solution. So I tried some easy solutions, and they're all a fucking nightmare. Mm. So I decided to just use the Windows partition, and I started downloading it there. So that I could have it, and I walked back up to the living room, logged off, kicked out. Oh, uh, it just kicked me out of the game just for downloading it. All. Yeah, so that sucked. Uh, otherwise, the game's fine. Yeah, I've been having a fine time. It kind of just throws you in. I'm a little upset the, that the first mission is literally just you just end up in a, in it just throws you into the world, and the very first thing that it tells you to do without giving you any tutorial or context or anything is get a hundred dollars. <laughs> And okay. seemingly the only way to do it is to pick up trash on the ground. Okay. Is to walk around and pick up trash and then sell the trash. And I was like, this can't possibly be the only thing that I'm doing right. is just picking up a hundred dollars worth of trash. So I picked up a couple dollars worth of trash and then I went to the uh their equivalent of the horse racing track and started betting on the horses <laughs> and lost all of the fucking money <laughs> that I had to get. So I started picking up more right. trash again. Um but the game's fine. It is like a Ubisoft game. It's right. like Assassin's Creed if the uh, parkour is worse and the stealth is worse. <laughs> but it's Star Wars, so it's right. fine. I my, so far my favorite uh, review, not really a review, but um, the Kotaku headline was "Star Wars Outlaws is a crappy masterpiece." <laughs> and like judging from like the way, like all the stuff I've seen of the game, I, I that kind of makes sense because like objectively, like this is like a. a a technical achievement it's a work of art like so many people put so much time and sometimes, effort to make it look like as good as it does sometimes it's really pretty yeah. sometimes it is absurdly ugly exactly <laughs> like you know and there's always there's gonna be something that like rips you out of there yeah. for some so. reason it defaults to 21 by 9 aspect ratio okay. with, with with crops because it wants it to seem cinematic yeah on pc notably you can you can take the window and make it however big you want uh -huh. and it and it zooms out and makes it ultra wide for you you can play it like it's a TikTok, yeah. or you can play it like it's just a super ultra wide monitor Got which it. is pretty cool um so i guess that's a technical achievement um one issue that i had playing the game i was going through a stealth section i made it all the way to the end of the stealth section and i went to do a stealth takedown on a guy yeah and there was another guy phased into his body <laughs> so i did a stealth takedown and then there was another guy and he turns around and goes you and I was like, what the fuck what the fuck so game's a little buggy it runs fine on that little nook that i was playing it on right. i tried it on my asus rg ally yet i'm assuming it's gonna run fine um, I'm not trying to get like a billion frames out of the thing. Yeah. Um, so for some reason I want to keep playing it. So I guess that's mm -hmm. a glowing. Endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> I will play it when it is on black Friday sale. Oh, Jay Bischoff in the YouTube chat says Epic, the Epic game store has yes. star Wars outlaws. See, I saw that after. And if I knew that I would have gotten it on the Epic store because then I can use the heroic launcher on Linux right. to, to get it. And I didn't realize that that would have been a lot easier. But I think you still have to connect to Ubisoft Connect to play Probably. it. Because even when I tried booting up Watch Dogs 2 on my Steam Deck, it still boots up Ubisoft Connect. Which doesn't work on the Steam Deck, so I can't play that game online. Ooh. So, 
Wait, does Watch Dogs not work or Ubisoft Connect not? Work? Ubisoft Connect doesn't work. So again, I have gotten Ubisoft Connect right. on the Steam Deck. It is a little bit of a pain in the ass. There, there's a there's a there's a program that you can get that just downloads all of the launchers for you. Yeah. Uh, and that worked pretty good, but okay. uh, it, it's still not as easy as like yeah. using the heroic launcher with Epic Game Store and and that's what you've done. Yeah. Yeah, you did that. Um. It's just a million times easier to just open up the Windows partition and yeah. play it on the Windows partition. Uh, anyway. We got to plow through the rest of the okay. uh, Real quick, Remedy Entertainment has announced it's partnering with Annapurna to develop TV and movie adaptations of his much-beloved Supernatural game series, Alan Wake and Control. There's no more details on the projects uh, other than that. Just the suggestion that the two companies are looking to turn Alan Wake and Control into multimedia franchises. Um... There are also many references to the first Alan Wake. Sorry. Of What's weird here is that the subtitle of this headline is the studio will also co-produce Control 2. Yeah. So if you go down further after it tells you who Annapurna is, uh, Annapurna will also co-finance and co-produce uh, the in-development Control 2s, uh, the sequel to the 2019 action adventures uh, about exploring the Federal Bureau of Control's reality warping paranormal HQ. Alan Wake and Control are part of the same universe inside Remedy, so it kind of makes sense that, you know, you'd want to develop, you know, sister series, like an Alan Wake something and a Control something. And the fact that they're also willing to put money into Control 2 is nice. I like the idea of Control. I only yeah. played a little bit of it, a very little bit of it on, yeah, the, yeah. on the Switch. Uh, <laughs> but I kind of really liked it. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's got really cool imagery. Yeah. Uh, so it's cool that they're making a Control yeah. 2. Uh, Annapurna, if you don't know, they are a movie studio, but they're one of the few that actually is a, a very successful indie game publisher. They put out a lot of successful in, uh, independent games. I had no idea they were. Yeah. I only know them as an indie game studio. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, so that's cool. I think that this is probably the biggest thing they've worked on so far. Like in terms of like, you know, a triple A game. Control? Uh, Annap Annapurna. Like Control 2 will probably be the biggest game they've worked really? on. Really? I think so. I don't know of any other like triple a type games that they've worked on they will say annapurna is a mountain yes <laughs> i didn't know that i'm learning so much today annapurna pictures yes annapurna cafe <laughs> uh annapurna pictures is the parent company annapurna interactive is their games interactive yeah thank you uh the the games have done what remains of edith finch florence uh the Outer Wilds, uh, Kentucky Route Zero, 12 Minutes. Okay, that's why I feel like they've done bigger games is because some of their indie games have exploded. Yes. They did Neon White, apparently. Yes. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is like their first like AAA IP. Yeah. They're working on Blade Runner 2033 Labyrinth. Okay. All right. Uh, more news. I forgot to... And close. More news: Marvel versus Capcom Final Collection and Capcom Final Collection Two, which we knew about, which we talked about last week. Right, but we didn't know it was coming to Xbox. Right now, we know it's coming to Xbox. We talked about it. We said it's not coming to Xbox. That's yeah. so weird. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics and Marvel Fighting. Uh, Collection 2 will be released on Xbox next year. In July, Capcom revealed plans to release Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection for Switch, PS4, and PC this year, but the game wasn't announced for Microsoft consoles, and last week, the publisher announced Capcom Fighting Collection 2 for release on Switch, PS4, and PC in 2005. Uh, following an outcry from unhappy Xbox players and technical discussions with Microsoft, Capcom said today um, that the collection will be both collections will be released on Xbox next year. Um, that's cool. It was surprising that Capcom wasn't gonna release it on those on Xbox, but now they are, so you can calm down. Is it at launch? No, uh, the Xbox versions will arrive in 2025. So they probably even didn't oh, even for, start for the Fighting Collection one, because Fighting Collection two launches in 2025. Right, but normally. uh, both the Marvel vs. Capcom collection and Fighting Collection two will launch in 2025 for Xbox. Right. Right, Which right. leads me to believe they didn't even start working on the Xbox version of those games yet. So right. they need time to develop them. And prob Fighting Collection 2 probably will not launch on Xbox at the same time as the other systems. I mean, it could. We don't hey, know when lucky, it's launching. Yeah, we just know it's coming in 2025. I'd imagine it wouldn't be too hard to port it. 
Probably not. Because yeah, it's coming for PC. Yeah. So. Uh, what else? But, um, uh... There were... Oh, uh, it is coming for Xbox One and PS4. So... Oh, I missed that. Yeah, so... Th- but you will be able to purchase them right, and play them on your Series X and PlayStation 5. Which makes sense. I, yeah. th- I think that's fine for games to do when they're digital only. Yeah. Uh, it makes it uh, more... Uh, uh, easier to... Yeah, easier to get on multiple platforms. Yeah. A game like this does not need to be natively launched on the PlayStation Five. There's, right, it doesn't get. It's not adding anything. I also think it, it makes sense because, like, I've, Xbox is it's more integrated between Xbox One and Xbox Series. So, like, yeah, yeah. Xbox, I think, is better at having like enhanced features. Yeah, like if you have one version of the game. Yeah. Uh, so that's fine. I'm totally cool with that. So it's cool that Xbox is getting that game. I moved it up. Uh, however, another game is missing Xbox at launch, and the developer is blaming Microsoft. Ooh, scandal. I saw this on Twitter. Look at this giant ad. Okay. <laughs> I saw this on Twitter, yeah. and I have never heard of this game before. Me neither, but I think it's it's indicative of a problem that's been going on at Microsoft, so yeah. that's why I put it in here. Uh Inotria, the last song, is a new uh, Sundren Souls-like inspired by Italian folklore, and it is out in just a couple of weeks, but not on Xbox. While the game will be available on PlayStation 5 and PC on September 17th, the game has been indefinitely delayed on Series X and S over problems with the platform submission process and what the developer calls a lack of communication from Microsoft about getting the issues fixed. Uh, we... Uh, we've had the Xbox Series X and S versions ready, but we cannot uh, proceed with submission and release. I spent a lot of money. Uh, I spent a lot of money for porting, and they decided to ignore us," said uh, Jackie Greco, the CEO of Jayama Gi- Gi- Games. Nailed it. The studio behind uh, Inotria. Uh, in an interview with Insider Gaming, the, st- the executive blamed a bug preventing Jayama from being able to open its store page on Xbox and submit the game. Microsoft was apparently responsive at first, but then uh, became radio silent. Enotria is one of a number of recent and upcoming Souls likes that uh, try to take. All right, that's about what type of game it is. That's not what's important. Uh, Enotria is also one of the increasing number of games that are skipping Xbox at launch for mysterious, confusing, or otherwise frustrating reasons. Baldur's Gate 3's absence from the Xbox uh, was due to optimization issues on the weaker Series S. Um, Black Myth Wukong rekindled the nightmare for Xbox owners this summer with speculation about whether the missing Xbox at launch was due to hardware constraints or a secret exclusivity deal with Sony. Uh, Funcom's upcoming crafting sim Dune is also facing challenges to Xbox, but for other reasons, out early next year, the game will be on PC first to iron out console issues. There's a lot of optimization that needs to be done before we release on Xbox, said Chief Product Officer Scott Jr. Um, But yeah, the Series S is a challenge. Calling Dune just a survival crafting sim is strange. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So so we get the point. It... it, uh... Clearly, uh, there's issues. I think when you're developing a game, unfortunately, if you want to put it on consoles, you kind of have to have a guy at the you yeah. need like a liaison. Uh, Nintendo is notoriously like the hardest to work with. Usually, Xbox is fine. Yeah. So them like not being responsive is uh, this is the first time I've ever heard something like yeah. that coming from Microsoft. Usually, there's like a guy that yeah. does that works with like indie games. Um, so that's real. That's interesting that that's the reason. Why yeah. It's I not- mean, and that's like such a banal reason. Yeah. You know, compared to like, you know, the game doesn't work on the system. Yeah. They just literally are ghosting him. And that's, yeah. that's why, uh, that's why there's issues. That's why he hasn't been. Yeah. Able to but I think, I do think it's indicative of a, of a list of like games that, you know, are having troubles getting on Xbox for one reason or another, be it the series S actually being a bottleneck be it nobody at Microsoft wanting to talk to you, be it uh, whatever's going on with Black Myth Wukong. Yeah. You know, so like that's not good for them if no. they're they're serious about staying in the console space. Something's going to happen with the Series S. Uh, that's a separate issue, it sounds yeah. like. But uh, Series S is going to have to get dropped at some point. Yeah. I it- mean, like my defense of the Series S has always been that uh, PC games are releasing and they're running fine on handhelds. So why yeah. can't they run on uh, yeah. a home console? No, I agree with S? you. Well, 
PC games are releasing now that aren't running so hot on right. handhelds anymore. Uh, I hear Black Myth Wukong is fine on the Steam Deck. People are. It's one of the most played games on the Steam Deck now, I think. I think okay. it might be the most. I think it jumped all the way up to the right. most played game on the Steam Deck. Uh, but I heard that game has some performance issues on lower powered hardware. So, yeah. uh, again, there's a, games releasing now that are going to start to be rough on those. Right. So, uh, yeah, I could see the Series S is going to have to get uh, something's going to have to happen. Yeah. I mean, I don't see Microsoft like dropping support necessarily, but no, I think but they need to the whole methodology of uh games all games will work on the series S and X. That's got yeah, that's that gotta to stop. Either yeah. they allow some games to only work on the Series X or they drop the the feature parity requirement. Yeah. Because that was a that was an issue with Baldur's Gate. Okay, here's what you do. Uh you Drop the Series S and X uh, parity. Mm -hmm. uh, you say, hey, if you have a Series S and you want to play Black Myth Wukong, uh, you can stream it yeah. for a significant discount. Yeah. Because they can't just drop the, par the, the parity because uh, that would be false advertising. Because yeah. they already told everybody that right. it would be the same games. Okay. Uh, where else are we? Uh, Capcom's Resident Evil mobile ports are about to get worse. Um, as shared on the iOS gaming subreddit, the latest update from Capcom for Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 4, and Resident Evil Village states, due to changes to the startup process, an internet connection is now required when starting the app. It is unclear exactly <laughs> why an internet connection is needed, though players are speculating it could be for DRM checks or simply data collection. Uh, Eurogamer has contacted Capcom for clarification. Arguably, one of the benefits of mobile gaming is being able to play anywhere, but that's somewhat negated by the need for the internet Internet connection even if only at startup uh this sucks because not many people are playing the, the version these versions of these games to begin with and yeah. now you're just like making it even harder for people to play these games also what if this is the de, de novo uh drm or something yeah uh, that's gonna run even worse these games run worse than they did when they launched yeah like, i uh I jumped back in recently for a video and they ran significantly worse. Maybe it was because I was in the iOS 18 beta, but uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I'll have to try again. Uh, I like the idea of having these types of games on, yeah. on my phone. Uh, the, the iPhone 15 Pro is like a very powerful handheld. Um, so it's cool that these are there, but putting a DRM is so weird who's, yeah who's pirating ios games i know it's especially like these ios games <laughs> yeah some of these are free to play like, yeah free to start at least um all right uh what else do we got uh speaking of resident evil and capcom uh resident evil creator shinji mikami uh doesn't think that uh says he doesn't feel that there's a whole lot of space for a new dino crisis game thanks to the success of monster hunter speaking to huh? your gamer at uh, gamescom with regards to the forthcoming shadow of the dam remaster mikami discussed the topic of a new dino crisis game it's a series most capcom fans want to see return um mikami said that he was surprised at the fan reaction to dino crisis but it seems the popularity of monster hunter has put him off to continuing the series what i'm very surprised to hear that says shinji mikami um, the awesomeness of dinosaurs and the stuff you can do with dinosaurs, that's kind of already uh, nailed down by Monster Hunter in recent years. So even if I were to decide to make to make a remake or a new version of Dino Crisis, I don't feel like there's a whole lot of space for that kind of game right now since Monster Hunter has become such a big game. But yeah, it's surprising. That's like saying, oh, there's too many zombies, Resident Evil, we can't make uh, yeah, Resident like, Evil games. The, the Monster Hunter is not trying to do the same thing that Dino Crisis did. Yeah. You know? Like, you can you could do both. Capcom is putting out Dead Rising again in Resident, in a world of Resident Evil. Capcom made a dinosaur game yeah. last year. <laughs> Exo Primal. Yeah. That could have easily been Dino Crisis, and everyone thought it was Dino Crisis. Yeah. Oh, uh, Mikami has something to say about that. The concept is pretty different from that of Dino Crisis. What, Exo Primal? Yeah. Okay, so, but so is Monster Hunter! <laughs> Monster Hunter is so different! Uh, 
It's just fucking stupid. Uh, Dino Crisis, just do the Resident Evil 4 remake yes, situation. With dinosaurs. With Dino, Dino Crisis. Yeah. That, that's it. That's all you got to do. So easy. We should be running Capcom. We should be running Capcom. I would, I would have so much to say. <laughs> um, okay. GameStop, everyone's favorite topic. Uh, they're doing retro games. Uh, the company is betting on the old school GameStop retro locations will stock physical consoles, discs, and cartridges from classic Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, and Sega platforms. The retailer announced the retro GameStop locations in a Twitter post. Uh, the company also has a website where you can search for retro-friendly locations within a 100-mile radius. Um, GameStop lists 18 classic systems supported by its retro stores, stretching back to its 8 glory days of the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Here's a complete list according to the company's a brief announcement. Uh, so yeah, NES, SNES, you know, you know what retro games are. So this was a big press release, and there's a new logo and everything, and everybody kind of freaked out. But like, they had this already. This was a thing that they had. Already. All they did was slap a logo on it. I think they're just turning some existing stores into GameStop retro stores. I well, honestly well think no, it's literally doing. a section in the store. It's not like they're changing the I store. No, I think this new initiative is just taking pre-existing GameStop stores and making them retro well, stores. It seems like it's it's a thing, though. Like, it's out. Like, you can go to GameStop yeah. retro yeah. stores. Uh, yeah, well, this is it's just a section. It's, it's just a section? It's just a little section. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is one of them. This is bigger than the other picture that I saw. Right. This is from Plain Rock. Um, but yeah, it looks like just a fucking GameStop section, and it just so happened to have Xbox and Wii U games. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. This isn't some, like, brand new, like, oh, my God, whatever. And these aren't even, like, that. So, like, they list that they're going to have, like, look at all these logos. You got yeah. Genesis, Dreamcast, freaking Sega Saturn. Uh, I'd be, I'd imagine almost no stores are going to have those. <laughs> all of these stores are going to have what you see in this picture here, mm -hmm. which just looks like the store that I worked at in 2008. Yeah. You know? This isn't going to be like the, uh, this isn't going to be like the answer to all your retro gaming problems. You know, I have heard that like the prices aren't, um, astronomical, like they're expensive, but they're reasonable. So that's good that might help drive the prices of retro games down mm. but like this isn't gonna be like you know the retro gaming savior we've been looking for no. if anything i wouldn't be surprised if this is like a, uh, a one-year initiative and they drop it again i think it's something that they've had already and mm -hmm. they just slapped a logo on it so yeah. i don't think this is something that like will necessarily need like to be dropped yeah you know, it's just it's literally just a section in the store yeah um, so I have seen other pictures where they had like, a. uh, am I making this up? Am I making this up? Having like DS games. Well, no, they have 3DS games. There. Right. Yeah. I remember there being like a section with like handheld shit. Uh, and it looked like, uh, the section that we used to have in the store. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. And it's just GameStop just do doing a marketing thing. Yeah. Uh, pay no attention. Basically. Uh, next news, uh, Metal Gear Solid 4, we're getting it finally. Uh, I mean, Catcom has dropped a very obvious hint that, that all but confirms Metal Gear Solid 4 will be Konami. getting HD. What? You said Capcom. No. Konami. That, sorry. We've done like five stories in a row about <laughs> Capcom. Konami has dropped a very obvious hint that all but confirms MGS4 will be getting an HD port as part of the Master Collection of Volume 2. Uh, Although Metal Gear Solid has spent most of his last decade being a little too stealthy, that's all starting to change the last few years. Not only did we get the Metal Gear Solid 3 remake coming out, but we got the Master Collection Volume 1. Uh, let me just find the quote. Uh, while speaking to IGN about the release of Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater, Konami producer Anor Anoriaki uh, Okamura was asked to address the rumors regarding Metal Gear Solid 4 getting ported to modern consoles. In response... Akamura cheekily said that Konami is definitely aware of this situation with MGS4. After saying that he couldn't comment right now, uh, Akamura pointed out that fans could probably connect the dots over what might come after Volume 1 contained Metal Gear Solid 1 and 3. And this is the quote. We definitely are aware of the situation with MGS4. Unfortunately, we can't really say too much at the moment with Volume 1 containing one... Uh, MGS 1, 2, and 3, dot, dot, dot. You could probably connect the dots. Right now, we still are 
uh, internally concerned about what we should be doing for the future of the series. So sorry, we can't really reveal anything at the moment, but stay tuned. Uh, it was also leaked already on like their website. They yeah, so like, for it. So, like, I mean, this is the this first time happen. they've like somebody has said something about it. Yeah. Uh, and again, this is a huge deal because yes. uh, this has only ever been released on the PlayStation 3 and there has never been a port of it anywhere else. Yes. Uh, so I will be interested to see like how they port it, though, because Metal Gear Solid 4 makes s frequent explicit reference to the fact that you're playing it on a PlayStation 3. Yeah. And I'd imagine that's something that they would want to change. Yeah. I wouldn't mind them leaving it all in. Yeah. Like even if I'm playing on a Switch, this is a <laughs> PlayStation 3, you know? Yeah. Also, like, there's an you have an iPod in it, right? Yeah, and that uh, would have to change. And there's like you know integration with like putting your songs on there and having yeah. you listen to songs through the game. So that obviously won't work. All right. Uh, did you, so I had this up from before. Uh, Enotria, that game we were talking yeah. about before. Uh, it is inspired by Italian folklore. Yeah. Did you know that there's Italian folklore? See. <laughs> Mario is Italian yes. folklore. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nintendo officially declares Breath of the Wild to be outside of the Zelda timeline series. So I'll just summarize this. Yeah. This is very easy. Uh, except where is the picture? Oh, here it is. It's a tweet from Wario64. Uh, this is from PAX. Uh, is it from PAX? It is. Um, no, it's from Nintendo Live 2024 in Sydney, Australia. Oh, okay. Uh, and this is a war tweet from Mario 64. It says, The Zelda timeline at Nintendo Live 2024 Sydney shows that Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild are placed separately from past Zelda titles. He means in terms of the timeline. Right. Uh, so this is something that Zelda fans have always tried to figure out. And mm -hmm. only recently, Nintendo kind of made an, an official timeline. Yeah. Um, and this is the first time they're explicitly saying that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are completely separate. I'm pretty sure they've previously said that uh, Tears of the... No, Ocarina of Time is in the timeline of Ocarina of Time. Didn't they say... That Ocarina of Time is in the timeline of Ocarina of Time? <laughs> Ocarina of Time, Breath of the Wild. My understanding was that Breath of the Wild takes place several thousand years after after all the other zelda games yeah it was speculated that maybe there was a point where the timelines merge again mm -hmm. and that's when breath of the wild occurs but it, the what was known was breath of the wild takes place after all the other games like some at some point in the future but now okay. here's nintendo saying like no no it's straight up disconnected yeah so uh i'm not gonna read through the whole thing but the first game is skyward sword which yes. i think everybody knew already um and then yada, 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 Ocarina of Time. And then Ocarina of Time, it splits, and you have the hero is defeated, mm -hmm. and then you have a bunch of games. Uh, and then the hero is triumphant. So, yeah. if, you, so if, if you beat Ocarina of Time, like I did, I beat the game. <laughs> um, there's games in the child era, like Majora's Mask, Twilight Princess, uh, Four Swords Adventure. And then you have adult era, uh, which is... Oh, Hyrule is sealed and then flooded. Yes. Wind Waker, Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks. And then it they have a big old like vertical line <laughs> which makes it seem like it's like vaguely related to those to those games but but like not, not really, really yeah. at all. Uh you have Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. And they they just don't explain anything. It just seems like they're yeah, separating them in, in some way. Um. Yeah. So, uh, this is fodder for the uh, uh Zelda fans. Oh for yeah, the Zelda theorists out there. Everybody kind of lost their minds on Twitter when they saw this. Yeah. Movie. But um, I mean, you know what? That's fine. Zelda doesn't need to be part of a timeline. It could just be a bunch of games. Yeah. I mean, the it seemed like the intention was that. It's a different universe every time. Yeah. You know? But uh, then you get games like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, which right. are clearly together, and Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, which yeah. are clearly together. Um, but this is something fans have speculated about, so it's kind of cool that Nintendo is giving an official yeah. uh, timeline. Anyway, uh, Nintendo changes content guidelines. 
Why is this important? Uh, Nintendo has updated its guidelines for content creators, strengthening its right to object to any content it deems inappropriate. That means they're coming after you. Wait, Nintendo can object? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nintendo's Great. game content guidelines for online video and image sharing platforms were uploaded or updated earlier today, September 2nd. Uh, whilst the company says it's humbled every day by the loyal and passionate by the loyalty and passion of his fan base it nonetheless reminds all content creators that they need to adhere to basic rules and reserve the right to object to any content that it believes is unlawful infringing inappropriate or not in line with these guidelines we reserve the right to not uh to no longer allow the use of nintendo game content in case of such violations the terms say uh, in a Q&A that explains what exactly may be deemed unacceptable, the company explains, we reserve the right to remove any content that we believe is unlawful, infringing, inappropriate, or not in line with these guidelines. In some cases, Nintendo may take down videos on behalf of our third-party partners. So watch what you say about the big N. Uh, these terms prohibit players from publishing any Nintendo gameplay that features graphic, explicit, harmful, or otherwise offensive content including statements or actions that may be considered offensive, insulting, obscene, or otherwise disturbing to others. So this could be interpreted in a way that's like, because uh, they say you can't have their content alongside anything unlawful. Right. Pirating games. That mm -hmm. could be something that they could take down. Yeah. My interpretation of this, though, is that they just don't want their intellectual property to be alongside uh certain imagery like yeah. like there's this guy on youtube that's extremely popular that does like a uh, puppetry of like a uh, mario doll i forgot his name yeah uh but it's all like nintendo ips yeah and he like made like a story out of it and it's like it, it's vulgar but it's like for kids but like not yeah, yeah. It, it, it's really like weird like that kids are gonna watch this and there's like yeah. they're like fucking it and stuff. Um, yeah, Nintendo's gonna not want that. Yeah. Nintendo's gonna be like, that's weird. I don't want you to use Mario in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, to me, what it seems like they're uh, going after. This is something that they've always done, though. Uh, this is just them kind of putting a label on it. I guess yeah. they're just kind of uh, tweaking their guidelines to uh, fit what they've been doing already. So, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Last thing, Amazon Games regrets the confusion over CEOs, AI, and voice actor comments after harsh online criticism. What did he even say? Uh, what did he, let, me, let me find the exact quote of what he said. Uh, here we go. Uh, Amazon Games CEO uh, Christoph Hartman said uh, in a comment, when we talk about AI, first of all, hopefully it will help us to have new gameplay ideas, which has nothing to do with... Uh, taking work away from anyone and especially for our games we don't really have acting the majority of the team sits in programming and that's not going to go away because that's all about an innovation if it takes something it will be really it will be the really boring parts now i need to see what games they've made because they have acting right they they must he just he just fucking pulled that out of his ass the new world is like the most popular one but they are i believe publishing the next tomb raider game lost ark there are a lot of untitled games here. yeah um yeah tomb raider untitled tomb raider project dragon's lair there's definitely voice acting in new world right yeah yeah no he's an idiot That's yeah. that was a the that was a, he did not he should not have said that yeah <laughs> he, was, he was definitely <laughs> just minimizing the work of these voice actors yeah um what an idiot uh Goes to show you, you don't have to be smart to be rich. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to find what Amazon Games then said in response because they apologize, but it doesn't. Honestly, it doesn't matter. This we regret the confusion stemming from these yeah, comments. Yeah. Of course, games developed and published by Amazon Games include actors who we consider to be essential creative contributors both now and in the future. Like most developers and publishers, we do not keep actors on staff, and Christoph's comments were specific to our internal development teams. That's not an excuse. 
As, <laughs> as with any tool, we believe generative AI needs to be used responsibly, and we're carefully exploring how we can use it to help solve the technical challenges development teams face. The more I hear about AI, the more I'm learning that it is a facade. Yes, <laughs> a thousand percent. Like almost nothing that is being labeled as AI is actually like built on a large language model or anything. Yeah, it's it's most of the time it's just pre-existing technology that they're relabeling AI to make it seem like it's magic. Which is crazy because like all it's doing is driving people insane. Yeah, it's like, and it's like the intention is to make investors happy and to yeah. sell it to people because yeah. people think they're. Their thought is that people will see AI and then be like, ooh, that's the new technology. I want a piece of that. But I think what's happening is like people are seeing AI and being like, ooh, I don't want any part of that. Yeah, I'm, but I'm wondering like, is it because we're terminally online that we know that like people don't like AI? Does the general consumer actually think that AI is the new cool technology? I don't think so because I think people are generally confused by it. You yeah. know, like, why, well, does, why are certain things now labeled as AI? What, like, I'm on Amazon right now because I'm trying to find it, but they've implemented this new feature called Rufus. He's a chatbot. Okay. He's a, Rufus just pops up. You can my, ask my old questions. roommate's dog, Rufus. Yeah. Rufus. <laughs> you know, instead of Alexa, their previous existing AI, they had to create a whole new AI just for their stupid website. Yeah. You know, that's what. And, that's, in, that's, fucking crazy and, and the fact that, that like amazon has alexa and it sucks ass <laughs> and they can't just put like a large language model into the thing that is that you speak to and i think it's the fact that like google completely reworked the, how search works to feed gemini it's the fact that you can't use microsoft uh, windows 11 anymore without using copilot yeah. you know it's the fact that they're force feeding AI integration to things that didn't previously need it or, you know, for, for people who don't necessarily want to use it. I mean, my, you would think that these giant corporations are doing market research when, before they're releasing these products. And they're, my assumption was that they were doing this research and being like, people are interested in AI. We better slap AI on everything. Otherwise, why would they do that? If no. you see AI everywhere, if 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 people aren't interested in it, why would they slap it on everything? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. I I think what happened was, you know, we we go back a little bit, you know, the tech companies, you know, thought web3 was a good idea. Yeah. You know, NFTs, the metaverse, Bitcoin. So they started slowly integrating that into everything, but people didn't want that they didn't care they moved on so now they're trying the same grift with ai you know which is a little bit more uh i want to use the term legitimate because there are cases where something like that could actually be real life useful yeah. but what they're doing is they're slapping it on things that don't necessarily meet the qualifications of ai they're releasing products way too early that are you know, not useful or straight up broken or in the terms of like generative AI with like, you know, artwork and video and voiceover and uh, writing programs like are genuinely don't work or create incredibly bad products yeah. and they're passing it off as the future. Yep. So... I mean, like, content-aware fill in Photoshop has been around forever. Yeah. And that was never AI. That's a useful tool. It's a, it's a time-saving tool. Well, my, my point is that that's not even AI. No. That there is now generative fill, which is very similar and could have just been an updated version of content-aware yeah. fill. Um, and the worst part about it is the way all these programs work is they have to, you know collect so much data yeah. and send it off to f server farms where actual human beings have to sift through everything and like actually make it work in the back end and they're doing it in like underprivileged countries so they can get cheap labor yeah 
you know, not to get too political on you. Well, there's the thing with the whole Amazon stores where where you didn't have to have yeah. a cashier or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, their whole idea was to have people in India uh, fucking uh, look at the cameras and follow you around the store yeah. and see what you're picking up and buying. Yeah. And the idea was to have them train the computer what's happening yeah and eventually they would weed out the real people yeah and you would have a computer take over yeah and the computer never caught on (laughs) so they're closing all of those stores yeah when i first used like chat gpt or or it's whatever was deemed ai when it first like exploded uh it was genuinely amazing yeah i forgot what i did with it oh it was probably generative phil uh, or it might have just been me asking ChatGPT something because having the computer talk to you in a in a in real human language was genuinely amazing. Now, like seventy five percent of the time, maybe it is like completely off base and fucks up in some yeah. weird way. So, uh, it wowed me for like a minute, and I think it did everybody else. And I think that's yeah. what happened with these tech companies is they did something with AI and went whoa. This is the future, and they are, they're putting yeah. all their stock into it, even though it doesn't have to be. Like, it no. doesn't have to be called AI. It's just, it's literally just computers are advancing. And what sucks is, like, you know, in cases where things used to be labeled, like, in video games, we used to use the term AI all the time to talk about the non-player characters in it, in, in video games, but now, like, you know, I'm afraid to, like, read articles that talk about AI in games, because I think they're talking about generator of ai or large yeah. language models being used in ai rather than just what controls the npcs i there's also the whole argument that like ai will eventually take jobs away from creative people and there is concern with that i think that uh in the in the near future like in our lifetime the ai stuff i don't think i think it'll be very obvious i think it'll i think it's very obvious now yeah so. I, and like I think computers can do anything and will eventually do ev- any anything. Right. Um. People are like, oh, it doesn't have a soul. It's like you won't be able to tell the difference. <laughs> uh. But I genuinely think that uh. It's it. There's just it's just not good. It's not good. Maybe yeah. in like a hundred years it'll be good and useful for like making a a blockbuster movie and no one will be able to tell the difference. Right. But in the near future. I think it's just, it's really, it's just, everybody's got job security. It looks fucking, like you can spot it from a mile away. You can go, something's fucked up about that. Right. Anyway. Um, hey, that's all the news. Hooray! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! I like this. This was from. John Cawthright, and it's a it's a picture from his drafts. <laughs> he didn't actually tweet this. It says, right. I have no memory of this. I thought this was a fucking banger tweet. And the tweet is, "What an incredible man, wonderful person. People are saying he's pulling animals into he's fuck. I'm fucking this up so bad. <laughs> <laughs> what an incredible man, wonderful person. People are saying he's putting animals in robots. I don't know." They come, they come up to me and they say, sir, what about the Chaos Emeralds? Lots of people are asking me this. <laughs> Nowhere does this say that this is Trump talking about Dr. Robotnik. But obviously it's yeah. Trump talking about Dr. Robotnik. <laughs> uh. I, thought that was, I thought that was a perfect tweet yeah. that should have been sent. Anyway, now we're going to talk to you guys. Real yes. Quick. Let's start with people with comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Wolf Den Podcast. Oh, yeah, we got I Know Bob 94. No, you don't. Uh, judging by the size of the diamond. Oh, God. I can start <laughs> skipping ads now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. She's got tiny hands. That's true. She's she, got tiny she, hands. She, she is a small. Very she's small, small lady. fingers. Yeah. Okay. The smallest fingers, some would say. <laughs> uh, e seven, eleven. What's 
I don't know this guy's name. Wow, engaged in a normal sleep schedule. Who is this adult and what have you done with Bob? This is gonna be all the fucking comments. <laughs> Britain changes you, let me tell you. Don't worry, I've been waking up at 10. Oh, there you go. I used to wake up at like one. <laughs> so. Not an RPG guy says, I've been subscribed to Wolf Den since I was in eighth grade. Oh, oh God, I want to throw God. up. I'm now 20. Um, and I have just, I've just got my first apartment. Oh my God, congratulations. Yeah. I was 30 when I got my first apartment. <laughs> I was 30 when I got a house. <laughs> I've seen you guys go through so much and I'm very happy to see where you both are now. Bob, keep up the amazing work and congrats on the engagement. And Will, please make a new video. It would be literally anything. It could be literally anything. Please, I'm fiending <laughs> ever since your last one. Please love you both, Wolf Bros. Thank you. <laughs> P.S. The first video I've ever seen from you guys and the one that got me subscribed was the best way to play Fortnite on the Nintendo Switch because I was in eighth grader. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. That feels like just yesterday. Yeah. When Fortnite launched on the Switch, that's when they also launched uh, crossplay. Yeah. And within months... Everyone just expected multiplayer games to have crossplay all of a sudden. And yet, we're still in a world where a lot of them don't. Surprisingly. Not many. There's not many that don't have crossplay. Crossplay is like pretty. I'm trying to think. Like, crossplay between like the major consoles. Yeah. 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 Like, most multiplayer games most have crossplay yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, and prior to Fortnite launching on the Switch, no multiplayer games had crossplay. Mm -hmm. It was maybe between console and PC if you were lucky. Yeah. But between Xbox and, and PlayStation, never. No. And yeah. Fortnite came out on the Switch and they were like, yeah, there's crossplay with Xbox. Sony's not playing nice. Yeah. And Sony's like, no, we're not. We're fine. We're, we're, no, we're, cool. nice. we're cool, guys. Epic really has been shaking up a lot. Yeah. And uh, good on them. Yeah. Good job, best friend, Tim Sweeney. He Good liked job, one Sweeney. of my posts one time. Uh, Melon says, wait, I was half listening. Bob went to Europe to get an N-Gage. <laughs> Can you even emulate on that? Yes. You probably could. I went all the way to London just to get an N-Gage. You can play... The PS1 version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 on an end gauge. I do, I, I do want an end gauge. Do not recommend that. I have always wanted an end gauge yeah. ever since it launched. I was like, <laughs> Mom, give me an end gauge. I was scheming, trying to think, yeah. how can I get our parents to get me? <laughs> in, to, how to, do I justify? Because, you know, like, you know, we, everyone would get their, right. their phones and I would sometimes scrape up some money to try to get like a weird upgrade. Yeah. And like, how could I justify doing a weird upgrade to get the end gauge? Uh, you can get a rare Nokia N gauge QD store kiosk for a thousand dollars. The whole kiosk? The whole kiosk. That's what I need. <laughs> Put that right in the living room. I'm seeing games. Oh, here we go. Nokia Engage QD, just the system itself. Uh, ninety bucks. That's not, that's that's nothing. not bad. Now, what games would I play? Tony Hawk, uh, Sonic Advance, Splinter Cell, right? It's One of the Splinter Cells is on there. Eric from last week's Wolf Den podcast said, "Bob, when I was in England, I also did the chi the cheese conveyor belt. Didn't get engaged." But I am engaged now, so we're like the same person. There you go. There you go. Congratulations. He's bear very belt. It was okay. Yeah, it was all right. You're gonna do it. Get the burrata. Pretty good. <laughs> uh, like a deconstructed pizza. Yes. It's burrata, and then you get like a little tomato sauce, and then there's there's bread. Oh, do it yourself. Do it yourself. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're just eating cheese. The it's not filling at it's all. Like it's like that Seinfeld cheese. episode with like the, the make your own pizza place that Kramer created. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> Apparently, so like there's like, I'm learning a lot from TikTok. Yeah. And I always read comments on TikTok and they're always fucking wild usually. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, these Gen Zers or whatever uh, don't think Seinfeld was ever funny. <laughs> and they hate him. 
I saw, I mean, I understand why you would hate Seinfeld. I under, I yes, also the, understand. But you are wrong. The show is very the funny. The show is funny. I almost like went into a tirade on Twitter. Is because, that not like Gen Z? Does Gen Z not appreciate like the nothing humor? I guess not. I mean, I don't know. The Skibbity Toilet is going to be a movie. What the fuck? Now that is nothing humor. Uh, I almost like just got real old man yells at Clasby uh, because when Planet of the Apes was coming out, uh, everyone on Twitter was posting the, the Simpsons bit. You know, the Planet of the Apes, the musical. Yeah. Yeah. Genuinely funny. But people are like, what is funny about this? I don't like the joke. Chimpan A to chimpanzee. Like, well, I don't understand <laughs> why great, was like, that's, that's a hysterical. great joke. <laughs> that's that objectively brilliant. a great joke. <laughs> that was so good. You know what the problem is, though? It's the same reason, like, uh, you can have, like, it's the same reason, like, when we watch the Looney Tunes, the Looney Tunes would reference older stuff. Yeah. And then you would watch the older stuff and you'd be like, oh, I saw this in the Looney Tunes. Yeah. Everything references The Simpsons. Yes. So if you're just now watching The Simpsons, you oh, I saw this. Yeah. Stuff. So I could see where it could be lost. But like The Simpsons still has things that like aren't directly referenced that are still genuinely yeah. funny that you can then use to, you know, use in your everyday life. Like chimpanzee. Like chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> Watch classic Simpsons. Watch a. Is it a fish called Selma? I believe that's the episode. I think people are too dumb now. Yes. And the 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 quick like one liners every yes. five seconds is just going right over their heads. Yeah. <sighs> people have gotten maybe maybe people haven't gotten dumber, and dumber people have gotten online. Yes. Because I'm seeing a lot more like fucking like spelling errors and like <laughs> uh, like uh just a lot of like horrible dumb oh, shit yeah. on the dumb phone. people have been empowered the dumb people have been empowered and that's yeah. the beauty of the internet is it empowers dumb people yeah it gives them a platform yeah all you need are two mics <laughs> and a camera yeah in our case three anyway uh edward bova bob you're the worldwide expert you heard it here first <laughs> Uh, on this subject, Call of Duty Black Ops 6 beta update censors controversial content from the game. Treyarch has removed some potentially offensive content from a Black Ops 6. It, is this a fucking 9-11 thing? And is that why I'm an expert? <laughs> uh, I, I think it is. The censored calling card in question used to feature what appears to be a reference to 9-11. <laughs> I'm... I am now an expert on this, <laughs> including the Twin Towers, a plane, and a censored face of George W. Bush, the president at the time of the event. And in an era where video games do their best to avoid anything that could be perceived as contentious, this imagery has been tweaked. How it made it into the final product in the first place remains unclear. Okay, so confirmed, 9-11 will be in Call of Duty. <laughs> We talked about this on the show. We but were like, again, there's like, definitely going to be 9-11 in this game. 9 11 was the early 2000s. This game takes place in the 90s. Yeah, but it leads up to 9-11, and you know that's going to be the big thing in the game. That's going to be like the climax of the game. It's going to be the big twist. And I'll say this and, again. And you know what? That's going to make me want to play the game. <laughs> I do not believe that that, that ever happened. <laughs> Look, Jesse Ventura said it didn't happen, so I believe. Right. right. No, I don't believe that a Call of Duty game will handle subject matter like the September 11th attack with any sort of maturity no. or nuance, of course not, or thoughtfulness. Would you say that they handled the uh, like? I mean, this wasn't a real event, but the No Russian massacre was that handled with maturity and nuance it was i mean it was definitely shocking and i do think that there was some thought put into it because you do not have to partake no you in the event you, you do well, you have to shoot police at the well that that's where they kind of ruin it because it goes from like you know going through the event and like seeing it and like experiencing like the emotions of it and then it turns right back into a call of duty game <laughs> yeah it does yeah, yeah. It would have been, you're right, it yeah. would have been uh, more impactful if you could avoid that part. Because yeah. that my interpretation of the no Russian thing, when I played it for the first time, I thought I got shot at the end because they saw I didn't kill any civilians. Right. So that was like a sort of like a narrative thing for me. Mm -hmm. And and that, uh, 
I thought that was great storytelling yeah. in a video game. I thought that was really cool. Uh, but no, I do want to see like a sort of like over the top like action version of like the events of like the Bush era. The, <laughs> the Mark Wahlberg version of what would yes. have happened. Yeah, yes. it wouldn't have gone I, down I, like that. I really want to see that. <laughs> As a 9-11 enthusiast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, jump out of the planes on a jet ski. <laughs> I'm thinking of, like, the first mission of, like, Modern Warfare 3, where you're in New York City and there's a fucking war yeah. happening. Ugh. Anyway. Hey, we're in the chat, by the way. Yeah, if anybody wants to talk about literally anything else so we can change the subject. <laughs> No, I don't have blue hair. Uh, the light, I guess, is hitting it's just me very shiny. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Do you see that there's a mobile shovel knight game on Netflix? Is really? It, is it the? Is it Dig? Shovel Knight Dig is great. Uh, let's see. Here. Next COD game, January sixth? Question mark. You know, that it might will not, be that that might actually be more fun. To Give play. it ten years, yeah. and yes, yes. I was gonna write January sixth in the app store to look for. <laughs> uh, wasn't that Splinter Cell Conviction? You stormed the Capitol, Splinter Cell Conviction. You do. <laughs> yeah, Shovel Knight Dig is on. Uh, Oh no, Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon is the Netflix game. Ah, so that's a puzzle game. Yeah, Shovel Knight Dig is just, uh, it's Apple Arcade. Did you guys talk about how they announced that they're actually ending Animal Crossing in a pocket camp in November? I have, I, this is the first I'm hearing of that. Is that the phone? Yeah. yeah. Oh. A lot of people played that. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised though. They will probably save that for the Call of Duty Zombies. <laughs> Bob, I was in the chat subway asking about Simu. Still haven't figured it out, but... Oh, Sunday. Uh, asking about Simu, still haven't figured it out, but one of my local game stops is gonna be a retro. So I am just gonna buy some games. That's the better option, is just buying the games. Yeah. If you wanna play it. Uh, Red Faction was an, amaz was an amazing N-Gage title, not gonna lie. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> the, pro the problem with Engage it, it is it had like a vertical screen, like a permanent vertical, vertical screens screen. can be cool. Yeah, but like for a game like Sonic Advance or Tony Hawk or Red Faction or Splinter Cell. Yeah, Sonic. If you're moving left to right, that's not cool. Apparently, there is a uh, a widescreen mode for Sonic on Engage, but it literally just letterboxes. That sucks. You got to design the game around the, the yeah. aspect ratio. Yeah. Uh, I just. Oh, underscore says they're making Pocket Camp uh, so that it could be played after it's offline. Okay. But uh, there won't be any updates or anything. Uh, there were some great ports, but most ran at 10 frames per second. Sonic, <laughs> you can press a button to zoom out. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Wolf Bros, thinking about starting either Ghost of Tsushima or God of War Ragnarok. Which one would you suggest? Uh, I've still been wanting to play Ghost of Tsushima. I haven't... I still haven't rewired my uh, TV to play PS5 games without, like, flashing in and out, so... Oh, yeah, it's the cable. Yeah, no, I, I gotta... But uh, Ghost of Tsushima is on my list. My boss at my 9 to 5 played it. He's like, the game's taking me forever. It's taking me like two months to finish, but yeah. he really enjoyed it. So, hey, are you giving away any Concord <laughs> Steam keys, or am I too late? <laughs> no, but they are. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're late. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Oh yeah, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. And thank you for chatting with well, us. Is always the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at eight PM Eastern, right here on twitchtv slash If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on youtubecom slash Podcast, so you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com, even. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement 
on all of those respective platforms. I guess what Beta64 is playing Mario Sunshine. So go, if you're on Twitch, go say hello to him. Uh, I will be streaming on Thursday. I am 90% sure I'm going to have a video on Thursday. Well, about the RG40. God, I hate these names. 40XXV. <laughs> but really, it's a video about how I'm sick of all these consoles. There you go. Uh, so I'll see you on Thursday. Uh, go say hello to Beta64, and we will see you later. Goodbye. Bye.